We live? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to another live stream here at uh, Death Ray Designs headquarters. Wow, already tongue-tied. Hadn't even really gotten started. I'm Austin, and uh, today we're going to be scratch building a piece of terrain with a whole bunch of stuff you probably are already familiar with, along with a new set of gribblies and add-ons that we're working on currently that will release on Black Friday. So we'd like to take some time and introduce you to it and uh, get some hands-on stuff and show you what all is possible with it. Um, in development for this, we actually built this lovely building here. Justin, if you want to get a little close-up of this, get that stuff out of the way for the moment. Um, actually uh, developed a lot of this stuff and built this right around the time that uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake was happening. So uh, that was fresh in my mind and we had a lot of uh, influence here from from that game and so um, on today's stream we're going to be expanding on this theme and trying to build another building that will be the uh, the companion building for this uh, in one of our little uh, I guess sets of unique terrain that we've got in the studio here uh, built with some of our uh, scratch build options so um, Justin is behind uh, behind the cameras today people <laughs> and he'll be do. oh really okay well i mean they, they, you guys can probably hear me um and i think also here is segway and, and i'm gonna steal the sunny uh so uh woody cavanaugh thank you for the hey light. woody appreciate that awesome thanks bud you. yeah um let's move that over there <laughs> uh so we have a few people here chiming early so first and foremost um mr warp charge gaming oh thank hey you. bud i appreciate you popping in we got black side studio finch he says hey boys <laughs> and we got um, Stephen Remington over on YouTube, playing Wolf popping in. We got Psycho, and we have uh, Bob, who's just followed the stream. Thanks, right on. Bob. Hey, Bob. Now, um, before we also get into the, the meat and the potatoes here, I want to let everybody know, um, if you're tuning in on... Uh, I am very distant, Bob. I'm sorry. Uh, we will <laughs> one day have cameras... Or, not cameras, webcam... <laughs> Microphone set up so that you can hear me, but uh, the fact you can hear me is good. Yeah. Uh, so before Austin gets into anything, um, let's address two things real quick. If you are on Facebook or YouTube and you want to chat with us live via chat, we can see it, but we can't type back to you. So uh, Stephen Remington, Warp Charge Gaming, uh, you guys over on, one, one's on YouTube and one's on Facebook. Um, if you did want to engage with the chat, Twitch is the place to do so. And Come Steven, on over. Yeah, you should. Uh, Stephen Remington says, "I dare you to run a Black Friday sale early." Oh, but we, we got we got plans. <laughs> Great out productions. One day, one day we'll have I'll have a mic. But right now, I have to be like Dobby. When when I'm free, he'll give me a microphone. You know what? I mean, we could just turn that webcam up there around, and you have your own little camera, bud. I could, and I could just be like, "Look at me, guys. This is the justice." <laughs> yeah, instead of it being me just sort of staring at the camera while you're talking right now, then you know. Well, Black Side Studio Ben says, "Bro, everybody does it early in regards to." <laughs> now, Black Side, are you guys trying to do it early? Because if you're doing the sale early, you know that's not good for us. Yeah, you know? uh, we might just have to, you know. He said that only the cool kids do it on the act. Oh, okay. So, Fair enough. Uh, anyways, we got that out of the way. So if you do say something on Facebook or YouTube, I will try and uh, direct it to Austin. If you want to talk to the chat, um, you have to pop over to Twitch and Bustin' Chops. Thank you for the follow. Austin will not be uh, directly thanking everyone for follows because he can't actually see. I can't the see. I'm the guy <laughs> pulling the strings. He's not actually here right now. This is a puppet. We're puppeteers. Yep. So, but anyways, now that I've rambled, um, Austin can go ahead and get back yeah. to uh, what he wants to do. Just show you. Okay, so um, the the new set, I've got this lovely dummy box here, and this isn't even the final packaging. This is uh, some of our uh, our prototype packaging, uh, but it'll be similar to this, and it'll be a box uh, about this size, chock a block full of um, cool terrain bits. Um, so uh, start off, and I think I've, I've talked about this in videos and interviews and things in the past, but uh, I got started. Uh, doing terrain when I was pretty young and I had nothing to really um, help me with that other than just like materials that I found mostly in the trash. So uh, the vast majority of my my starting off down the, the road of building uh, scenery either for 
um, you know, model railroads or dollhouses or later D and D and then 40 K and all the other war games that we got into over the years, um, was it, it started off from a place of having no real resources and not really knowing where to go to look for those partly because I was a kid and I didn't know where to look and partly because, uh, the internet was pretty new back then and there weren't a lot of resources out there. So unless you had a really nice shop in your town, which we did not, um, you weren't going to have a whole bunch of ready-made assets to use on your buildings or even pre-made terrain. Um, it just wasn't a thing back then. So, um, over the years uh, of doing scratch building and then making kits, uh, there are certain elements that we decided were um, ones that are very difficult to actually scratch make uh, and be consistent with unless you're getting into more sophisticated um, techniques like uh, casting in resin. So, you know, you could sculpt something and then make a mold and then cast a bunch of identical pieces. Um, but that's usually not... Um, not necessarily, not in the wheelhouse, but not in the time budget or money budget for most scratch builders. They'd rather just sit down and start crafting. But if you had uh, a way to have a whole bunch of consistently sized parts, uh, like windows, like doors, like ladders, like stairs, like other just general uh, detail pieces, that would make creating something a lot faster and still gives you the creative control to say, okay, I wanna put this here and that there, and it's not a, a locked in kit. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. <laughs> we make those things. But um, for those of you who are a lot more interested in making something custom, uh, a unique piece that only you have, um, kits don't necessarily cater to you in that way. So, uh, Justin, if you'll cut on over here. Um, this is one of the, the elements that is in um, the, the kit, the uh, terrain takeout box. Um, and we've got a, a variety of pieces that are just jam-packed full of uh, various uh, different uh, rectangles, squares, um, little teeth patterns for gears. We've got a sheet that has some ladders and stairs on it, uh, as well as some other just random elements. And we're also uh, sprueing in uh, most of the things that we would consider to be helpful extra pieces. So the insides of the ladder rungs are all sprued in, so you've got some nice little extra griblies for details. Um, we've got a variety of different uh, support struts and then all of their internal pieces. Ooh, I guess that one was supposed to fall out. Um, uh, that, that will be useful for, for detailing out things. Um, we've got a variety of different metal struts and um, I guess uh, flanges and little brackets to hold uh, piping and tubing in place. Um, a couple of plates that are like this is just two big plates at the top here that are intended to be a quick and easy way to drop down um, more or less a, a detailed pattern kind of uh, on top of a, a, a building face and not necessarily have to do a whole lot of arranging you just kind of have places to drop other assets on so you might put a, a door here and a window up here and some little fans or something down here um, and then we've got a few uh, sets of, of squares that are, I guess, and rectangles uh, that have details on one side and you can flip them over to have blank sides. Uh, and the last two sheets are just uh, various sized arcs and oval punch outs and other little um, pieces to, to break up your, your surfaces. So um, that's the MDF pieces. Um, and I'm gonna sort of blitz on through the rest of these things because um, I know that you guys probably don't want to sit here for more or less an infomercial show and tell sort of thing. You want to get to it and actually do something cool with it. But if you want to buy stuff, DeathDesigns.com! And these will be available on Black Friday. So, uh, all right. So these are the, the card elements. So we've got some more detailed stuff here. Um, we've got uh, vents and gratings, more vents and gratings. We've got fans and other little gribbly pieces. Uh, some different grating. Oop. Um, frames and I guess like window slat kind of things. They kind of just end up being whatever you want them to be. Um, some doors. You've got the the door backer and then a frame. Uh, and we kept the the middle part um, in case you find that useful for something else. And then a couple other doors and some more uh, frames and windows slash grating. Those windows are super duper neat. So we're not going to be doing any painting. 
But the thing that's really cool though is like if you do some masking, masking you do like, mm-hmm. that cool like gradient effect behind them and make it look like actual like glass or uh, an NMM style like blue fade or something. Like yeah. that's probably my favorite thing from the, the kit so far. I don't know if you guys will agree. That's super cool. Okay. All right. So quickly moving on. Um, granted, the jars are not something that's coming in the kit, but we've got a whole bunch of rods and tubes as well as some flex hose material. Uh, for doing all kinds of duct work or just random um, piping and hosing going between sections of the building. All right, let's grab these guys here. Okay, these look a little bit like a mess right now, um, but, and, and they're a little on the <laughs> hard to see side here, um, but they, oh, 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 almost got it. Where's that glare? Do you have an example of any of these you used on that building? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, that might be good so you can showcase that. Oh, and the building's right yeah, next to me. Building. Hilarious. Okay. Yeah, no, I know. I was looking for the building. It was sitting right next to me. So this little guy here, uh, I believe, is one of those. Um, and this up here. Uh, it's a lot more visible now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry about that. They're they're hard to, to see when they're clear like that. Okay, there's another one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Where are we? That is... Uh, there, oh, wait, oh, here, there we go. <laughs> I forgot what camera we were looking at. So this little guy and I think there might be, okay, and then this, that little thing. So some very small details, but um, they do help break up a, um, uh, a surface pretty, pretty nicely. Um, only a, a handful of those and it starts to feel like it's actually got some, some stuff going on. Uh, and then the last piece, one of my favorite pieces, uh, are all these nice new little resin elements. And um, actually, let me switch over to the main cam for a second. Um, just gonna zoom in here. Okay, cool. Yeah, switch it, switch it back over. Oh, that's the back of my hand. All right, so ah, let's take the lid off of that. We've got all these nice little uh, resin assets. Um, we've got some, some little tech plates up here. We've got um, hex bolt heads. We've got for the other side, uh, washer, nut, and the, the bolt actually sticking out through it. We've got some two millimeter dome cap rivets. Um, and then we also have... These are super neat. Um, these little security keypads. And we've also got some lights. Um, and we've got two styles of those. Let's see here. So we've got the more industrial style uh, lights with the, the cage around it. And then we have these sort of like uh, Fresnel lens style ones. Um, and uh, while these are, are really handy for um, just detailing out kits, they also do have, like if you trim away these little extra uh, supports around the edge, the center post, um, is the the right size to fit into the holes on the uh, the columns for a lot of our modular kits. So if you wanted to uh, replace the uh, MDF lights with these, um, it's just a matter of picking up a handful and then popping them in. There we go. That is all of those things. So, all right. And I think that's all of the elements in this kit. Um, but this is, this is, uh, meant to be, um, a bit of a, a terrain smorgasbord. You got a whole bunch of different pieces, uh, to use in, in various ways. And then, uh, we will be selling a lot of these things separately after the kit launches. We just want people to get a, a sort of taste for it and get some feedback. Um, and, um, we'll, we'll, uh, sort of go from there. Uh, a lot of what goes into... Um, the individual packs later will depend on uh, what kind of feedback we get and what people are using more of and uh, or what people would rather see a wider variety of. So, so I, I'm pretty new to, or I mean, I'm a, let's say I'm, I'm super green when it comes to uh, designing <laughs> or building DIY terrain. You, you yeah. know me. I paint toys and play games. I don't yep. build terrain. So you've shown off the bits that we are, um, are going to be marketing here shortly. Um, do you mind going through some of the elements they'll be used in conjunction with that the our hobbyists, our consumers may already have or may need to source? Like, what are you going to be using in conjunction oh, okay. with that sure. we don't sell? Um, uh, as far like the the main thing that we don't sell that's a consumable thing and not a tool is uh, foam board. We'll be using a lot of uh, 
foam core. Um, most of you are familiar with it. Um, it's just a, a two sheets of paper with foam in between. Uh, it's a nice sort of structural element that's available pretty much everywhere. This, this stuff is black foam with black paper just because I felt like it would um, it would show up a little bit better on camera and wouldn't blow out the contrast. But a lot of it is uh, just white foam, white board, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's cheaper that way and you can find it at you know, even, even most like supermarket grocery stores. So it's widely available, uh, craft stores, grocery stores, or supermarkets, at least, uh, in, in the school section, um, as well as, uh, Amazon and tons of other art supply places that are, are more focused towards art or even framing. I think, uh, a lot of frame shops use it as a, as backer. So do a quick, uh, hobby store name drop. Uh, if you guys have a Hobby Lobby near you, mm -hmm. use that 40% off coupon on the app. Save some Hobby Dollars. You can get that phone board thing, 40% off. It always works. Phone app. I think that's uh, people know that from Uncle Adam. But yeah. he, he preaches it, and I, I buy stuff all the time. So if you're on a budget, and you're doing some DIY terrain, Hobby Lobby, 40% off coupon. If I'm honest, I prefer Michael's. But... Oh, well, that's fair. I don't have one. But they, I think they have an app, too, where you can get yeah. a discount code. Yeah. So yeah, Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Check for the discount codes or coupons online. We used to have to print them, but now I think they have yeah, apps. Yeah, they got they got apps. So uh, whichever whichever uh, you prefer, both of those shops are uh, are you can get a good discount. Granted, a lot of times it's like one item you get a discount on. So if they got a pack of uh, of boards, then cool. But you know, getting forty percent off of a two dollar board is kind of a you know it's kind of a pain. You gotta take your family, <laughs> and each person buys one. There thing you go. Your hobby project. There you go. Um, as far as other consumables, we're going to be using some glue. Um, we've got uh, various super glues for certain pieces, but because foam is um, sensitive to, uh, to super glue, uh, it tends to dissolve the, the foam. Any of the stuff that is actually going to be glued onto the raw uh, foam board, we want to use hot glue um, or PVA, I think, in some situations, but hot glue is faster, so we're going to use that for the most part. I would just recommend getting a hot glue gun that has a low temp setting. Uh, so that you don't boil the phone, basically. Um, as far as tools go, uh, realistically, all you need is, uh, you know, a, a, a hobby knife, or I, I prefer uh, a snap blade Ulfa cutter. Um, it is, uh, fits into the hand a little easier. I don't feel like it's going to roll on me. Um, and a lot of times I find that I need a longer blade for cutting foam, uh, cutting it at a a more shallow angle means that you're gonna expose more of the blade and it's gonna just cut easier and smoother and you're not gonna have as much tearing. Um, other more specialized tools you may want, um, a, a razor saw or a jeweler saw. Um, these are not very expensive. I think this, this one is a Zona brand one and it came with a bunch of extra blades and things. Um, so there's a, a variety of different uh, attachments that came with it. That one's getting rusty. That's weird. Um, but the the most useful one is this uh, jumbo uh, um, razor saw here. Uh, almost no kerf on it, meaning it removes very little material, um, and uh, you can cut through most plastic or wood things with it. So. Um, I suppose the only other thing that's a must is uh, some sort of ruler. Um, I've got that piece that I cut and then a uh, plain old cheapo yardstick. Um, and that's all you really need. Okay, so let's look at what we're going to build today. Um, I've picked out a piece of concept art that I found on Google that um, feels like it would match um, with the, the style that we've already sort of established with the other piece. Um, and also because I'm pretty sure this is actually something from the game that I was looking at when I got my inspiration for the first building. So it, uh, it makes sense that, uh, that this would go along with it. Um, the, you, you still got it up on the screen over there, Justin? Yeah, I switched to the hyper zoomed in one on your left. Actually, we'll, we'll go with this one. Oh, okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. So, um... I printed out a, a copy for myself just for extra reference here. And I think um, we're not gonna try to recreate this exactly. Uh, we just wanna draw some inspiration. Uh, so we're gonna pick out a handful of elements from it. 
um, and, and try to incorporate those into our building. Um, I like this uh, cantilevered part out here. I think that looks really nice, and I think that, uh, that we could accomplish that pretty easily. Um, I, I definitely like some of, some of these pieces that jut out up here at the top with either signage or wires going to them. Um, I, I'm really a fan of this big, I think it's a, a fan piece that's sticking out on a box that's also got some, some bracing going back in. And mostly just generally the idea of it getting bigger at the top than it is at the bottom. Um, I think that that silhouette is really nice and um, it, it definitely captures that aesthetic of fantasy but in a sci-fi setting. Um, and um, I don't necessarily know if I'm going to try to do anything with this market sort of uh, restaurant thing down here. I'm not necessarily feeling that for this build. Um, but if we more or less look at it from about there up, I think that's that's the part that, that I'm interested in right there. So uh, we'll try to do a couple of floors um, and have uh, some playable areas up on the upper level. Um, maybe Maybe make it look particularly ramshackle and having um, all kinds of little things protruding off of uh, all the sides. And also we're only looking at two sides of this right now, so we'll have plenty of room on the other side to uh, to play and do something weird, so. So you have a few, a few comments here. So okay. first of all, um, if you remember at- uh, Shall we switch back? At Nova, yeah. um, the booth next to us, uh, the guy that was helping run the booth, Daria, yeah. just popped over, all the oh, stream, says hi. Awesome, hi. Uh, Malev. Hello, Shinobi. Hey, Just buddy. Over. Uh, Malev, you know you want to be working on some of this awesome terrain. <laughs> um, and then um, uh, Daria asks, how long is the stream going to be running for today? Um, I imagine we'll be up for a few hours at least. I mean, we're just barely getting started now, so um, it'll take a little bit of time. We'll probably take a couple breaks throughout it, but um, we'll, we'll be on for at least, at least two hours, probably more like three, three and a half. Cool. All right, so if anyone has any questions, again, if you are on uh, YouTube or Facebook right now, uh, we see chat. I can't directly uh, comment back to you very easily. If you want to directly engage with um, some of the guys and gals here hanging out, pop on over to Twitch and hang out with us there. <laughs> Wolf asks if during our breaks we're going to play hockey. Uh, un unlikely. It'll probably be quick bathroom breaks and have a, a couple sips of water and get back to it. <laughs> Maybe a handful of chips. Also, Clan Wolf, as we are getting uh, transitioning, um, we're on a new system, and me actually being able to mod is a little bit more difficult. Thank you for deleting that spam. You're doing a good job already. <laughs> Do we need a second screen or something over there? Uh, no, I need to get the Streamlabs bot set up over here. Mm, okay. What happens today? Fair enough. Um, okay. You know what? We're just gonna do a little drawing on the back. Actually, you know what? No. no. Planning. What's that? We don't need planning. Um, just do and we're just gonna do it. All right, <laughs> here we go. Uh, let's see here. All right, so I think that starting off with a relatively small base footprint um, is going to to serve us well. Having something that's let's see here, uh, probably in the like four inches wide range. So I think that this has got a, a nice sort of base footprint that way, and that's. Let's get an actual tape measure out here. Uh, yeah, it's about three and a half inches across. So doing something about that size, and, and maybe we'll keep to the, the the width on that side too, which I believe is more like six inches. Uh, nope, I was wrong again. About five and a half. So um, keeping to, to that, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's just uh, start rock and rolling here. And we're going to start off with our... Um, our larger stuff here and just kind of flip through and see kind of what we want to do. Um, these I like uh, and you can you can kind of see it in the the background here. It gives you some little background details kind of going through various areas um, and uh, just sort of breaks up the surface especially around these edges here too. Um, but not every surface needs one of those. Um, let's let's use one uh, and we'll we'll come back around to that. Um, so we've got that, and then I'm gonna snag. Let's grab you know, a couple of those guys, 
and doo -doo 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 -doo. what else what else what else i got some fun little bits and pieces there but uh, i don't necessarily know if we need to break out every single little bit of that um okay so let's just uh we know we want to put this on one side of the bottom there so we're going to grab our foam board okay scooch some stuff out of the way here All this stuff everywhere. All right. <laughs> what camera are we on? We're on. Oh, we're on that camera. Okay. I assumed they wanted to see what you were doing. Yeah. Well, no, I know. I'm just trying to. Do you want me to switch to the super zoom in? Uh. I'm going to zoom it out. Okay. We can we can we can stay here. Okay. Just making sure I get it all centered up. Um and. Maybe we could zoom in. Nope, that's zooming out. <laughs> Our floor is really nice. Why is it so hard? <laughs> I mean, welcome to Twitch. Yeah, you want to switch us back over to the main cam so I'm not making everybody Well, they also sick. might not, I don't know if they want to see a midriff right now. Oh, okay. That's fair. We need a Professional. We need a technical difficulty. But we did get a... a, a Compliment. Invested painting says loved overlays and custom Twitch stuff. Thank you. We like it too. All right. So, just gonna go ahead. Actually, that's about the same size. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna scooch that on up that way. And uh, while well, Austin here, Dr. Death Ray, MD, lowercase F, while he's uh, doing some work. Uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, concerns, critiques, whatever it might be about uh, things that we can do to improve, please let us know. Or if you have ideas for things you might like to see in future streams, let us know. It's uh, it's something new for, for us to be trying to, to do, but it's an endeavor that we're taking seriously and uh, want to do some more streaming out here. So uh, if you have some ideas or thoughts for things you want to see, chime in. Let us know. Okay. So we've got a piece here. I think I'm just going to cut a few more of, uh, of that height. Because this is a relatively sort of ramshackle uh, building here, um, we don't necessarily have to be as precise as we would if we were trying to do something really super polished. Um, hey, yeah. Bragging Unicorns Game says, quote, can't wait for my Gangs of the Undersea set to arrive, <laughs> end quote. Thank well, hey, you. buddy. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, my fingers might be bleeding from packing up stuff that uh, <laughs> may or may not be from getting citizen. Yeah, Justin's been working for the last like what week or so just trying to get every every everything packed up for that uh if you guys aren't familiar with it uh gangs of the undercity is a kickstarter campaign that uh um just finished up a few months ago from fragging unicorns and um super cool cyberpunk game um I don't know what the release schedule after the Kickstarter is going to be as far as the game goes. Um, feel free uh, if you want to drop that in chat, Chad. Yeah, yeah drop the link, uh, Friday Unicorns. Um, as you are currently viewing from Facebook, I'll grab the link and throw it up in Twitch. If you guys want to check out uh, their game, it looks pretty awesome. And not a lot, there's some pretty cool terrain they got going on too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got our our piece of foam that's just a little bit taller than that it gives us a little bit of extra room. Um, and now let's build out the rest of the bottom here. And okay, we're gonna do the, the wall opposite it, so keeping it the same size. And then for this other one, oh, is that not quite? Wasn't quite level there. Do 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 do. Yeah. There we go. Turn that on down. And then um, instead of just cutting another one exactly this size, I'm just gonna scoop this on down so that we've got something that's a little bit more like that short edge of the building. Um, actually, let's see if we can just be super material efficient here and get it slightly under half so that we can just trim the other side down. That way we don't have to cut any more of that. 
Dragon Unicorn says they are looking to fulfill in late December or January. Then we'll have stuff up for sale for the public. Right on, man. Okay. So, we've got our, our four pieces here. Um, these are going to be the four lower walls of, of basically the first level here. Um, so, what we need to do next is uh, create uh, some rabbit joints for the corners so that we hide the foam. Uh, we don't want to have any exposed foam that we don't have to. Um, if, we, if we can cover all the foam up, then that means that we can... Um, we can prime it a little bit more easily. We can cover up the little extra bits um, and the primer won't dissolve the foam. So we got uh, uh, two comments here. Yeah. The uh, first one from Invested Painting uh, says the marketing sells itself. He says we should do two cons, Death Con 1 <laughs> and Ray Con 2021. Oh boy. And uh, for any unicorns like that, thank you. Thanks, uh, buddy. The Daria asks, when researching buildings and landscapes for scratch builds, what mm -hmm. are some good keywords or sites you use for inspiration? Um, when I'm looking for inspiration, most of the time what I'm looking for isn't a specific finished product. Like, I mean, obviously you can get inspiration from, you know, walking down the street and seeing a particularly cool <laughs> building or a particularly cool landscape. Um, but for some reason I find just sort of hazy concept art to be much more interesting in the same way that, uh, and this is going to sound far afield at first, but um, sometimes the best horror movies are the ones where you don't see the monster because your brain fills in what the monster looks like and you get to make it the scariest thing in your brain. Um, in the same way, I like looking at concept art that is a little bit more impressionistic, a little bit more hazy on the details, because then my brain gets to fill in all the rest of those details and at the end of the day, those details are my details and not their details. Um, so if, you, if you're looking at somebody else's concept art, obviously there's plenty of ways that you could do it in a way um, that would get you in trouble for copying it exactly, um, which is not what we want to do at all. We want to have our own ideas, but drawing inspiration from other things is perfectly fine. So um, looking at something that isn't a finished product, I find is, is the way to go. So looking for concept art, um, looking in art books for video games, looking in art books for, um, you know, various uh, existing war games just to sort of get a flavor uh, of what that is, or just architecture books. Um, for the most part, um, you know, there, there's uh, there's a ton of really great stuff out there. I, I've got a bunch on um, Renaissance architecture, on brutalism, on Art Deco, those are all great places to, to look and see actual, you know, art history still physically out in the public where you can see it all the time. Um, and uh, there's some really beautiful coffee table books out there uh, for those, and usually not super expensive on Amazon. Um, Outside of Google, we end up on Pinterest, I think it is a lot. Yeah, Pinterest there's is a, a lot of cool stuff there. And, um, you guys can't see it, but we have a slew of codexes, rule books, and actual like art books from video games and movies that Austin mentioned, mm -hmm. but even a lot of indie games, which um, especially the like miniature agnostic minis games, we, we have a lot of that stuff here because they have really cool art, but no actual physical representation, so we kind of have to create something that goes uh, or fits in with that. So yeah. we've got a bunch of books that sometimes Austin's doing a design thing, he'll be like, hey, I need that Blade Runner book. Get it. And then I go over there and we get it. And the thing, you know, it's slight side chance tangent. The Blade Runner is really cool because a lot of the artwork or um, uh, stuff in there that they they made is similar to what we do, but on a slightly larger scale. So if you guys didn't know that, a lot of the Blade Runner uh, architecture is actual like buildings they handmade. Very cool. Yep. Yep. Ooh, got away from me. Okay, so back to the 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 rabbit joint here. Um, I know I kind of jumped in while Justin was talking there, but let's let's do this on the other side. Basically, we're trying to remove just enough material for us to be able to wrap the paper around the side of the other one. Uh, this is just a, a scrap piece that we had left over. And what I'm gonna do here is set this up on the edge and I'm gonna make sure on this side over here, the, the side of this board and the edge of this are lined up. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mark. Malev says he now wants the DRD Brutalism Sci-Fi Kit. <laughs> so much of the stuff feels like that, and the Acropolis stuff gives me those vibes. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Brutalism and uh, some of our um, uh, upcoming um, 6 to 10 millimeter stuff um, that we were designing with 
uh, games like Battletech in mind. Uh, some of that definitely has uh, some, some brutalism vibes, but um, I guess we don't have anything that's specifically modern brutalism uh, at a 28 mil scale, and yeah, maybe maybe that's something we, we jump into later. Get with us, Melez. We yeah. like your paint style. Yeah. Talk to us about <laughs> your ideas for terrain. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, we've marked this, and this is the, the distance between that and the, the line. Uh, the edge of the board and the line is the width of the material. So I'm just going to come in here, and we're not going to cut all the way through. I'm just going to get this up to the line here. Oh, and we're off screen. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Austin's doing his cut here. Uh, Dar Hold on. I, let me, oh, let me oh, finish sorry. talking about what I'm doing. <laughs> no. Carry on. no, we're not going to cut all the way through. We're just going to pierce the paper here. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of drag the knife through. Not, still not piercing it. You want it to like break free, but not pierce this backside. Are you creating like a corner here? I am creating a corner. It's, a, it's called a rabbit joint. Um, and then I'm going to uh, take my knife and I'm going to try to get it right between the paper and the foam. It's okay if a little bit of foam is still on there. Um, and we're going to just run the blade right down between the, the paper and the foam. So now we've got this little flap of paper hanging off so that when we go to make our corner, it fits together that way and you've got paper covering all around the edges. You see, that, that's pretty smart because I feel like I would have just glued those together to look like trash. Well, the uh, in fact, I'll, I'll not do a rabbit joint on one of them and show you an, uh, a different technique that you can use uh, instead of a rabbit joint. Okay. So, rabbit okay. joint's still pretty neat though. Yeah. All right, so we had a question. Uh, so, um, first of all, Darius says the rabbit joint looks so much easier than a bevel, and uh, which I would agree. Um, For sure. And uh, is commenting on the, um, kind of what we're talking about with architecture, and says that uh, one of the cool things um, I've noticed is, or, uh, in, for example, contemporary architecture is during um, the short time trucking, is that America itself has a lot of architectural variants, mm -hmm. including ruined buildings. So much of the South for manufacturing cities are just abandoned, overgrown, and it's very inspiring. Yeah. I, I love, uh, you know, ghost towns, abandoned architecture, um, places where um, nature is reclaiming uh, what once was a city. Um, Some abandoned factories are super awesome because, like, they start to, like, they're not quite like a house where the, 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 the vegetation uh, takes it over super quickly. It kind of starts at the bottom. You say broken windows and stuff. It looks almost post-apocalyptic, but, like, yeah. right down the road, there's still people and life is normal. It's pretty neat. Yeah, I think I've heard that sort of uh, condition or what have you um, referred to as urban reclamation, yeah. where it's um, the urban or suburban or industrial areas are being reclaimed by by nature. And for, for some people, that, that's the thing that's really cool, is that for some people... Um, that just looks like oh whatever trashy and boring but for people who are looking at uh, looking through life through the lens of maybe art they see something different that other people don't and that's very cool you can find inspiration everywhere if you're open to it yeah i'm gonna make a couple little marks on the board here i'm gonna try not to be an idiot on camera i can't see <laughs> oh no you're fine now you're fine <laughs> it's back <laughs> okay Okay, I think uh, I think I've got my my marks here. Uh, Daria, now. I also talk a lot. Uh, Austin will be nice and just laugh it off, but I don't shut up. He just nods and acknowledges that I'm around. Yup. <laughs> I keep him awake. That's about what happens. That you do. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So we've got those pieces, and yeah, that's the scrap. So we've got uh, all four of our our wall pieces here now, Woo. and. Did our, did our hot glue gun auto power off? Oh, I missed what a pain. That, um, Joshua Lemire, Lemire, sorry if I butchered your name, uh, over on Facebook, we don't see all the chat stuff very quickly there. Uh, says he discovered a gravity joint tool by Foamworks years mm -hmm. ago, very useful for those types of cuts. Um, I think I even have one in the back room. Um, I just ran out of good blades for it, so 
<laughs> I'm doing it by hand. Uh, the the um, the Foamworks Rabbit Tool is good. I just find that um, I end up just blazing through blades, and uh, I never keep enough of them on hand. So, um, if it's a thing that you're going to be doing a ton, it's probably worth um, doing. But you know, it, it wasn't that hard to to do this, so I don't mind it. Malev, we will uh, we'll, we'll address that when we can. We've had some people be like, "You need some mic." We tried. Um, it is better to hear me slightly muffled than to hear Austin and myself echoing with two mics. So I think, yeah, I think this is probably sustainable for now. If it's too bad, I'll just type. Yeah, um, I might. Okay, this might be absolute audio poison, but I wonder if I if I can just like. Angle. Like yeah, I'm gonna angle the mic just so that it's kind of pointing between us a little bit, and maybe that'll help. I'm sorry if this is like deafening anybody. Okay, we'll we'll see if that helps at all. It's kind of angled between us now. All right, Malev, can you hear me, sir? <laughs> do I sound any better coming through the microphone, or do I still sound like I have a sock on my face? I mean. I mean, I did grow out my beard. It's not quite as long as yours, so we're not socks shit. That'd be a big sock. <laughs> okay, well, that's heating up for the moment. Um, so I'm going to uh, pick out a few more little gribblies and things to um, cover up our sides with. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, you know what? Another material that is key to... Uh, Everything uh, scratch build is plastic card for sure. Um, what's going on with that camera? Which one? The one that's on right now? Uh, it's this one over here. Oh. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, Clo Basnick says, I still sound distant, but at least Austin didn't deafen us accidentally. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. Plastic card. It just, it looks really dark. Is it uh, something I, up I with I bet the... it's auto white balancing. Try, try moving that paper out of it to whatever. Yep. Ah. It's, a, it's a slight tint darker. Okay. All right. Well, sorry if that's any harder to see, guys. All right. Um, we'll have to figure out our auto settings. It, it doesn't look that dark on the... Okay, whatever. How doesn't matter. It's a okay. Plastic card. This is uh, 040 high-impact polystyrene. That is 0 0.04 inches thick, and um, it's a nice big white sheet of plastic. Um, I'm not going to be particularly precious about how we're using this right at the moment. Let's, you know what, tell you what, we're just going to use the, the ruler width, which I think is about an inch. And let's just go ahead and strike off a, a one inch section. And the nice thing about polystyrene is that you don't have to cut all the way through. Score and snap works super well. Um, and then let's see here. Let's let's go a little bit wider for the next one here. This can definitely help break up our surfaces with some nice paneling, and then we can add some rivets if we want to. Um, okay, so over here, I'm gonna make some some little strips, and yeah. Okay, if if I were um, if I were doing something that was supposed to be super duper clean, I would, I'd probably measure this out exactly or buy some of the evergreen plastic strips. Um, but especially with um, doing like shantytown stuff, we don't really have to worry about that too much. And if you wanna keep it roughly consistent, um, you can always put your, your first strip back up on top of the, the piece and then push the ruler so that it lines back up at the edge that way. We get a reasonably consistent set of strips. And we don't necessarily need a ton of these right now. Um, we can always cut more if we need to. Styrene sheeting is, uh, is pretty inexpensive. So there we go. We got our strips and then we can just sort of chop this stuff up as we go um, to uh, whatever length we need. All right, are we warm enough yet? So, cool. we are. Uh, while you're prepping to build this building, and mm -hmm. I, I understand some of your inspiration why you chose it, but 
If you were to be playing a war game on it, what war games do you think would uh, suit be best suited for this style of building you're creating today? Um, I think the the one that jumps to mind immediately would be uh, Infinity, but um, I think there's a a place for this style in I don't know most most sci-fi or even modern um, like war games. Might work well. Like yeah, like yeah. Necromunda would be fine. Um, I think even 40k, depending on what your setting is, if, if you were on sort of some far-flung imperial world where they don't really have a whole lot and they don't have the technology to really make nice new stuff and they're just sort of ramshackling things together to, um, you know, just try to get by and produce whatever it is the Imperium, Imperium sent them out there to do, um, then I think that that could work just fine. Yeah, it is lacking that overarching you know grimdark gothic feel that 40k terrain frequently has but uh i would i would uh i would contest that that theme is mostly around more core worlds and on terra um great out says that he thinks that building also has a steampunk feel and might look good in war machine yeah uh I, I don't see why not though i think that um some of, I mean, you basically just don't put on the like super high tech bits or paint them to look a little bit more like um, steam powered stuff and you'd be good to go. So um, there is a, a game name here. Uh, are you familiar with a game called Gates of Antares? Me? Yeah, it's produced by Warlord. So Malev says his dream terrain from DRD would be for us to produce Gates of Antares terrain. If I said that right, I hope I said that right. Okay, well, I mean. It sounds like a conversation with Warlord. Is it then. like a, a 10 mil scale game? No, it's 28 mil. 20? Okay. For some reason, I, I have, like, I like have a bunch of it. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, more or less, we're just going to take our, our hot glue gun and we're going to run a thin bead down the edge. And I do want to get it out as close to the edge as I can so that now when I put this in. Making sure that we're we're even top to bottom, and that edge gets pressed in. So now, you can see we don't have any more foam. It's just paper all the way around, and uh, our hot glue covered up any any issues that we had there. Um, if you do find that you've got a little bit of overhang, um, you can always just come in and register your knife right up against it. Trim that little bit off. And there you go. You got nice smooth corners, and uh, we're off to the races. Okay, so let's keep on rocking and rolling here. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little schmear on there. Great off production says that's a fancy glue gun. Yeah, I think that's uh, some sort of Amazon special. It is a Super Bonder brand. Dual temp. Um, it uh, it's a lot better than the like cheapo, uh, I think Arrow brand one that we had for a long time. It's got a handle that doesn't make me feel like I'm going to explode it every time I pull hard. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of cheapo glue guns that I have broken over the years, but this one has managed to hang with me and uh, not get uh, not get too damaged. If it can withstand uh, use at the DRD shop, it's got to be pretty robust. Because uh, we make cool stuff, but we're not delicate with our tools. Yeah, that is that is true. Um, I feel like being particularly delicate with terrain or the things that we make um, does not serve to stress test them well enough for um, the use that I am sure that they will get in the field. I did like how we switched and you were saying stress test while pushing on that building or that shape. Yeah. Okay, so we have our first little bit of building done. Um, and now it is time to start detailing that out a little bit. Um, I do think that we probably ought to... No, no. I was going to say let's put a base plate on it, but I, I don't think that I want to do that. Um, mostly just because... Um, we don't know how far out we want to build yet. So once we're all done, like once we get to more or less this point where all of everything is, is uh, decided, we could go back through and put a base plate on if we need to. But um, I think the base plate's kind of 
break the immersion a lot of times unless it's absolutely necessary for the game or for the mechanics. Just, just leave it be. All right. Let me grab MDF pieces and rustle can, everything near the can, microphone. Can we get that building on camera real quick? Sure. You can do a quick, uh, we'll, we'll try not to spend too much time doing this again. Um, Malev, this is a combination of, uh, was that foam board? Is that what you called it? Yep, it's it's a, a white foam board and some other gribblies and things and a variety of bits that uh, we are currently producing. Yep, so um, uh, Malev, the idea here is, is that uh, for new scratch builders who can get certain materials at the store, we can supply them with our little, uh, what's, what do we call them, the takeout box, train takeout? Yeah, it's the train takeout box. Yeah. A train takeout box with uh, lots of little gribblies that you can spice up your DIY kits with that you otherwise might not be able to do uh, as easily. Yep, mostly focusing on the pieces that need to be um, a consistent size and shape, like doors, windows, vents and grates. Um, just the stuff that's a pain. It's not, it's not creative. Um, that is just like I just need a bunch of this thing, and I need it to be the same the whole way through. Malev says it's gorgeous, looks seamless, and uh, then he goes, "Those little hanging wires and stuff, that's fun." Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna do a little bit of that today too. So. And then uh, the Roach Man says, "Hooray! Fifty minutes in, and we've got a box." Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Austin made the mistake of having me run the board, which means lots of talking. Cause yep. Otherwise. No one just want, no 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 one came for the train. They came for his beard and his sultry voice. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Sultry voice. Uh huh. I'm not even sure exactly what that means. It just sounded cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I just glued the plate down on there. That's going to give us just a, a more or less an outline of where we're going to put things uh, on that side. And I think uh, for this, let's let's dig into our card details here. I think. Maybe. We're gonna put a window or a door? I think we're gonna do a door. Yeah. Um, let's go with uh, let's go with one of these. I like those doors. They are pretty and they, they look very different from the MDF stuff that we already have. Yeah. yeah, the MDF stuff we already have. Um, so very neat and they're pretty slim because the material they're made from. Yep. They are made from a particularly tough hardboard material. Okay, so I'm just gonna Clip those. You could probably just punch these out by hand, but I'm trying to avoid having little little fuzzies left over. Okay, so we're gonna save that guy for later. All right. So I'm thinking maybe we have that off to one side, and that'll still leave a little bit of room on the side if we want to use one of our little keypad panels over here. Yeah, that'd be cool. Get a close up on that panel. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, oh. those are super neat. It's one of our, our 3D printed resin detail pieces. Also in our, oh, there we go. our little um, terrain takeout box. Yay. Okay. All right. Uh, glues. Um, Dolly has an interesting question, which yeah. might be good for me because my fingers are kind of oily. We, we know this when I work with MDF. Uh, Dari asks, when working with MDF, how do I spare my fingers from drying out when moving things from the frame? Any ideas? Drying out. Um, I don't know as I have ever necessarily had my fingers dry out because of handling MDF, but I could see that. Um, you could um, you could wear gloves, I suppose. Um, I know that's kind of a pain. It doesn't necessarily help, but um, if, if, if MDF weren't such a, a, a an absorbent material, I'd say, you know, well, just moisturize your hands ahead of time, but it probably won't necessarily help. Um, just because it'll it'll wick all of that moisture away. Um, I don't know. Gloves gloves is probably your best bet if you're really having a hard time with that. And Daria, uh, I definitely don't have calluses. I uh, I have very kind of dainty skin on my hands. <laughs> but one thing my hands do is if I touch MDF all day, my fingers are all stained and it's gross. I look like I've dipped my hands in nicotine. It's really bad. Um, and Malev wanted to know when the yeah. uh, set would be on sale. Black Friday. Black Friday. And uh, Malev, if you are into doing uh, DIY terrain stuff like this, uh, send us a, a DM on Facebook. We'll have a little chat with you about uh, the terrain Ooh. takeout box. Okay. So let's snag one of these. Do, do. Cool. I'm thinking... Somewhere down here is like a little 
little vent on the side. I think that would be cool. And you know, the one of the things that I have a hard time uh, doing in these sorts of uh, builds is knowing when to stop. Um, I think that for almost any of uh, any of us, any of we hobbyists, um, knowing when you're done is always an issue. So um, coming up with kind of an idea of the detailed density that you want ahead of time keeps you from you know starting off and then your first panel is just absolutely cram full of details and then later you're like oh I don't know if I want to keep up this pace uh, probably should have gone a little lighter on those um, so just sort of considering you know right now we've got a few detail things going on and we've got some lines um, but you know if we if we look over here at this as an example you know this is incredibly dense this is just like super super dense uh, whereas you know, these areas up here are a little less dense. And then this strip through here, aside from the wires, is really pretty spartan. Um, and then all through here is pretty lightweight. Um, but then you've got uh, places like right through here. Like that, that is a lot of concentrated detail. Um, and this is pretty light. So you could alternate like that, or um, you could try to keep it sort of consistent throughout. So I think on, on this, uh, piece. Let's let's do just like a couple of, of extra little pieces, um, and uh, maybe some simple strips, and 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 we won't necessarily choke this thing to death. I think on the uh, the big building you were showing, one of the things mm -hmm. you did well is even the dense places is uh, you rotated between like dense, interesting to less interesting, and back and forth. Yeah. And the eye is really drawn to the really interesting spots, and the stuff that was less interesting was mundane, and it felt like that was by design. Yeah. So. Kind of like uh, building yeah. feng shui, maybe. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna make a handful of small, uh, small rectangles here um, that we can we can place. Oh, weren't holding that edge there. Okay, so we got that. Snap. Actually, you know what? Let's break these guys up. We can do it with a knife. Or we can do it with this, uh, this, these miter snippers. Um, so we don't have to necessarily be super consistent, but we can chomp through a handful of pieces real quick. There we go. Okay, so we've got some little, some little bits here. Um, okay, and maybe uh, so. Uh, Definitely want to leave space here for for one of those. I'm thinking maybe just a little something up here. In fact, you know what? Maybe maybe we want a little light. Let's grab one of our lights. Um, I'm gonna zoom us in here for a second. Okay, so we've got this series of little supports on the bottoms of these, um, and that should be fairly easy to, to deal with. Where are my snippers? How do I not have snippers here? <laughs> uh, do we want a quick BRB? Um, no. Can you just grab us some snippers? Do you know where they are? There's a... I don't know. No, they're not going to work. <laughs> At least switch it back over to... Oh, sorry. Um, nope, still not. <laughs> okay. Alright, well. Work on all this stuff till, uh... So he gets back with some some cutters. Basically, we just need to, to trim away those uh, those little supports. And the the central piece is uh, intended to be an optional peg to put into um, either a hole that you drill or a hole in a piece of terrain, um, like for a kit. If you wanted, uh, I think that we mentioned at the top of the show, um, but the central post actually is a, a good size to swap out for the lights on the columns for. Um, Deadbolt derelict and warp strider and such. Um, okay. He's taking too long now. We're just gonna try with something else. Oh my goodness. He walked away and had some sitting next to him. Hilarious. I found some, bud. They were sitting right behind you. Well, 
I'm waiting okay. for a nice jog. Okay. So we're just going to go around here. Oh, okay. I can just pop free. Dara asks if uh, wood glue is better for MDF. Oh. And he uh, um, says, but sees that we're using super glue and wants to know like what you would recommend and why you might can use you, it. Uh, can you swap over? Uh, other, other camera. I just want to get closer here for a second. Oh, and where are we? Let me just throw that around. Okay. I'm trying to get my huge fingers in the way. Okay, so in the end, um, that's kind of what we have going on. We've got our piece, and then we should still have a little central post on the back. Why can't you focus? There we go. All right. Um, so uh, in this situation, because we're probably going to glue it to a flat surface, I'm just going to trim that off entirely. So now we've got a flat surface. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, so let's get that lined up how we want. And I'm actually gonna use the, the super thin super glue here. You know what? Let's don't glue that straight down to that. Let's let's find ourselves a little something interesting to put that on. Um, so we've got a bunch of like little accent pieces here. And I think, okay, those are a little narrow. Maybe we've got something over here. So we left a lot of these circles sprued in so that um, they could be used for that. You know what? One of these might be cool. Which one they can't see? Oh, I'm sorry. One of one of these little guys here. They got put it in the center of it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's gonna be cool. Okay, so let's let's just grab that there. Oh, accidentally punched out something else. Okay. So there we go. Yeah, I like that. That's cool looking. Yeah. Okay. So let's get this oriented that way. And I'm just going to twist that around until we are level. You know, this is a, I think you're going to be a little bit bigger than, uh, um, uh, than this when you're done. But currently, this is kind of reminding me a little bit of our uh, pop shops from Odenheim. Yeah. Like yeah. The size and the detail level that you're, you're putting into it. Yeah, and um, actually brings up a good point. Um, one, uh, okay, so uh, before I get into that, I'm using the uh, the thin CA on this, mostly because I don't have to put any glue under it, and I can just sort of dab next to it, and it'll wick under it really nicely. Yeah, there we go. Probably still have a few seconds to adjust, yeah. Okay, there we go. Looking cool. All right. Um, sorry, what was your question again? Uh, Sundar was asking uh, if wood glue is generally better for MDF. Uh, Sundar says yes. It? Yeah, wood, wood glue is is generally better for MDF, but it takes longer to set up. And since we're trying to get through uh, a fairly complex build inside of a few hours, and we're barely getting started an hour in, um, fast is better. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be fair, I think most most of our consumers probably use uh, super glue, um, and I think most of your designs are, are designed in such a way that even with super glue, they're pretty sturdy because of the way they go together. Yeah, um, for our pure yeah. MDF stuff anyway. Yeah, agreed. And the vast majority of our kits, while they may have some accent pieces that are made from a different material, um, they're all the core is going to be MDF. We had a recommendation um, that the zoom might be a little too close. Um, and that the zoom? They, yeah, the zoom. Oh, the yeah. Um, and that uh, being zoomed out a little bit more, you were in frame more often, and we could, they could still see it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the feedback. We appreciate it. Yep. Okay. So, um, I'm thinking if we put a couple little pieces of this plastic card up here to sort of break up our surface, that's going to give us something to, to dry brush against. Um, and uh, just some, some generally cool details and I might actually let's let's come on back over here and we're going to punch out um, just like one of the little pieces from, from the middle of that so I think that'll be pretty cool um, yeah okay so let's, um, let's just put a couple little dabs of glue where we want things to go 
that was a little bit much. Come on. We'll put one right over here. Okay. So Malev says, bruh, I'm dumb excited about this kit. I just recently got a prox on. And yeah. I'm cutting foam like a madman. What's that? What's a prox on? Okay, so you know that hot wire foam cutter that I have? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that is the uh, absolute piece of junk version of the very cool like like the the, the Proxon foam cutter is super sick. It's, super legit. Yes, it is. It is very legit. Uh, oh. I need a piece of that. Uh, invested painting. Um, what events specifically uh, are you referring to? Um, invested is having a chat about the super glue. Uh, he mentioned that. Uh, uh, they had used uh, Warp Strider for a whole bunch of Zone Mortalis tables and then said, mm. thanks, Death Designs, for sponsoring the events. Oh, yeah. Uh, not sure what events they are, so let us know. But we do try and do a lot of sponsoring. For anyone who's never reached out to us, uh, we're super chill with uh, events, both large and small. Uh, our, our view is that if the uh, community and the games and the events are going well, we're doing well, so we try and give back. The taking of Firex and Horse Hosey 30K narrative events. Oh. Series. Okay. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see. Oh, let's so see what we got. Is that the guy we talked yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the it's... guy with the cool night stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I've I've just dumped a, a handful of little pieces here and there. Um, I think maybe a thin strip right up here. Um, let's uh, let's actually cut ourselves a little piece like that. But I, I kind of want it to be. A bit thinner than it is right now. So let's uh, let's jump on in and trim that down just a hair. Cool. All right, we've got a little tiny thin strip here, and maybe maybe we'll uh, we'll trim the edges. I'm just gonna take my snippers. We'll just angle those edges. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's cool. So we just got a little, little piece that sits above the door there. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pick this guy up with the point of my knife and Let's see if we can get not a bucket of glue to come out of this. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. Not bad. All right. So, I guess our next side, let's figure out what our, what our tactic is going to be on the other side. Um, woo. um, I guess the, the, the first question is, do we want stairs or a ladder or something going up one of these sides to an upper platform? Justin, what do you think? Um, I like stairs. I like ladders. So anything that looks like it, it helps break up the facade and gives models a place to hide or move or stand, I'm cool with. So I like stairs. I think I'll be cool. Okay. Um, all right. So we've now, got... What? What, what would your thoughts be, uh, so um, you guys get ready to see our stairs, uh, if you wanted to have them <clears throat> um, both kind of come straight out or run along the side, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, what, how would you approach those two options differently if you were affixing it to this building? Well, um, I think if I were doing it um, running along the, the edge, uh, basically parallel to the, the building, I probably need to make a little block that sticks out uh, so that you basically walk up to the top of the stairs and it's not like, you know, you walk up the top of the stairs and if you take one more step, you're going over the edge. You want to, you want the stairs to come up to a landing. So I'd need to build some sort of little block thing for, for the landing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's easy enough. How many stairs do I need here? One, two, three, four, five, six. I got one, two, three, four, six. There we go. Okay. So we got our quick and easy stairs. Whoop. Oh, hey, Thunderhead Studios, thanks for popping in. Yeah. Says he's uh, very curious to get his hands on some of our upcoming DRD Battletech terrain, which for anyone in the chat who doesn't know or might have missed it, a few weeks back we had a 
not super awesome audio quality. Great <laughs> games were played type quality stream where we played using some of our upcoming terrain. That was a collab with another company that we currently have not mentioned. But uh, it might be obvious if you pay attention to some of the people who have been hanging out with us in chat. Yeah. We're, we're going to announce it next week, though. So. <laughs> oh, Thunderhead, that's me in the background. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we are really hoping that uh, um, the value of the amount of terrain you get uh, for the, the, the cost and all that, the, the quantity, um, and the detail level you get at this scale is going to compete well with 3D uh, prints. So um, we've been playing a lot with 3D printing stuff recently. Um, and while it's affordable, a lot goes into it. Uh, if I'm honest, our, and not, not just going to bias, but our R&DF terrain is really easy to, to cut and produce, and there's a lot less headache than the 3D stuff. So. Yeah. The, the only reason I could see, um, um, or the only major um, benefit to the 3D uh, printing versus our MDF, I think, would be just some of the detail stuff you can do that we can't do with MDF. But uh, for the headache that, that comes along with it, um, I think the MDF is going to be a, a nice alternative. Yeah. I think I articulated that well. Hope so. Yeah, I, I think it more comes down to the fact that, um, at least for the style of 3D printing that we're doing, um, Buildings are oftentimes at too too large a scale to reasonably do well. Um, that is to say, we do um, uh, SLA printing and not FDM. So if you're familiar with 3D printing, FDM is the kind that uses a plastic filament, um, whereas SLA uses a liquid resin. Also, before we get too far away from the resin thing, uh, Thunderhead here does 3D designs, uh, some mechs, some buildings, things like that that he sells. Uh, I don't want you to think I was slinging shade. The things that you do with your um, your 3D designs are things that aren't very easy to do with MDF, so they're very different. So yeah. just letting you know. Yeah. It's just we don't have the right printers on hand to do 3D printed buildings, so we stick to we stick to what we can do. All right. Come in, reinforce that from the back just a little bit. And yeah, um, there we go. Thunderhead, if you want to send us a message, uh, Facebook is easiest. You know where to get a hold of me. Um, toss me your your, your details. Um, we're going to have um, some Battletech promo stuff going out um, here soon, and uh, you're on that list. So um, since you're here and I can tell you directly, um, if you get some time, toss us that message. Toss a message to your Justin. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think that um, while we could do this on this side and just have a, a block back here that creates the landing, I think that maybe it might be more fun to have it stick out the side of the building that way so that you get a more interesting footprint. Yeah. Um, I think that that's probably gonna work a little bit better. Um, so we could either build a solid block that sits here or we could just build a platform. Um, I'm thinking that in keeping with our desire to keep the, the actual base um, footprint relatively slim, maybe maybe we just do a platform that juts out. So let's let's figure out what we've got in the way of uh, platform pieces. Uh, some of the stuff that I pulled off originally or, or initially from those uh, stuff like that that might be a little bit big. Maybe we go with. <laughs> Where did the rest of that sheet go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see what we got. Um. Uh, so, uh, anyway, designs, I think I got it right. Thank you for popping in. Hey, um, not sure if you are new to, well, you probably knew the stream, but not sure if you're into the hot eat world, but if so, let us know. Um, and Daniel B. Fantasy says, Hey, what games do you play nowadays? Uh, video games, board games, etc. What are you into? Um, well, I I'm really enjoying the little bit of Battletech that we've been able to play. Um, Specifically Alpha Strike. That's been, yeah. uh, it's been so, it's been nice and leisurely. Yeah, it's been, it's been really easy to jump into and a lot of fun and you can get a bunch of games in in a single day. As far as video games go, um, I've been casually playing through uh, Control. Um, I didn't pick it up initially when it came out. It kind of flew under my radar and then um, speaking of brutalist architecture, that game is chock-a-block full of it and has been really quite lovely. Okay, so Justin, let's take a look here. Okay, so 
Um, I've got this piece here, and I'm thinking maybe we do something to kick it out just a little bit, and then we can have our, our stairs go up to that. And we, we can. Were, we were chatting. Uh, can you show the sheet that came off of? Sure. So uh, he, the stairs were obvious because um, it's actual mixed stairs. Uh, on our sheets, for those of you guys who may not have seen it, saw this at the beginning, we showed these off. Um, yeah, go ahead, Austin. You explain what these are. Okay. So this is a, a sheet full of uh, squares with some, some light texturing on them. Um, and it's just a, an easy way to either have, you know, textured squares or plain squares um, and, and, and rectangles um, for just patching up the sides of buildings and doing platforms and all kinds of other things. So um, we've got that and uh, a variety of other, I'm not going to go all the way through back, back through all these. We've punched out some stuff already. Um, we've got tons of, um, you know, corner braces and... A variety of other little gribblies and parts um, that make mounting things or reinforcing things or shaping things a lot easier. So with a, a couple of, of uh, a bits off of these, uh, these gribbly sprues, you're making this platform here. Right, and I'm going to use these these little corner braces um, to prop that up. Um, but we do need to put something in behind it just because um, I'd like for this to be centered up. And we've got a little bit of a gap there. So uh, I'm just going to grab, I don't know. We've got some little little strips of things in here. Actually, here. This will probably work just fine. What do we have? Okay, so those are the right size. So we will just throw a little bit of hot glue here. So let's see now how we're how we're doing. Yeah, I think that that spacing looks a lot better. Okay. Oh, but you know what? If we do that now, we've got kind of an odd an odd thing for for that to mount onto. So let's throw on one more little piece here. We'll go right underneath that. Okay. And now, using a little bit of super glue, let's tie that down. And while I could have put that all the way out at the edge, I think having a little bit of room uh, for overhang looks a little cooler. So now we essentially got our little reinforced platform and I'm just gonna put a touch of super glue on the back of that. Okay. All right. There we are on the underside. We got that platform and then we can attach this right here, and that'll be that'll be good. Do you think? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think we might need to prop up the the bottom edge of that just a touch. Just I feel like that's flatter, and we've got a little bit of room underneath. So let's uh, let's take this. Maybe we can actually just tie it. No, that's not gonna work. Because that's going to be way far out at that point. So we'll just we'll just cut ourselves a little piece of uh, MDF that's the right size there. So uh, uh, anyway, designs. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure who this was. Uh, reached out to me on Facebook, and I was like, "Oh, hey, uh, we spoke the other day, Tim. Just give you a shout out. Um, we have not forgotten about your uh, design things you wanted us to check out um, as we get through the." The Black Friday uh, rush and all that stuff. We'll we'll circle back around and try and uh, get you some information about your designs uh, as soon as we can. He's the guy at the, the paint rack stuff. Oh, right on. Okay. All right. So yeah, there we go. Uh, it's not glued in place, but I do think that we need to have at least a touch of reinforcing something that's going between them. 
So I've got this, and this will slip through that, and we can get it under that lip there. So let's let's trim this down just a just a touch. Did we get enough of that off? Oh, not quite yet. So that should work there. So we're just going to, um, let's see. It's probably gonna be easier to do it upside down here. Uh, Memoff um, says that uh, it looks like it might have been able to, you might have been able to do a step down. Um, oh, that's true. But it wouldn't quite have been enough space to uh, to actually do another step. Um, we were we were off by like an eighth of an inch. I guess we could have just had it slide right under. It it wouldn't have been that crazy. It, it'd have been fine. But I've done it this way now, and that's the way it is. <laughs> it is now blue. Yep. We cannot undo it. All right. So this isn't exactly attached there. So I would like to remedy that with a little bit of hot glue. Okay, and that's going to be a little bit of a pain to get all the way under there with the hot glue gun at least. So I'm just going to take a little piece of MDF here and we're just going to get a little bit of hot glue on there. We're going to well, see. Most reply to your statement was this is the way. <laughs> yes. For now. This is the way for now. Yeah, for now. Until the way changes and then that's the other way. <laughs> Thunderhead says, sarcastically, Bo-Katan this is the way. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, this also gives us this cool area under here to do something else with, because that's a little boring right now. Um, I mean, honestly, it looks like one of our um, uh, dumpsters, trash cans, or something could have yeah. been there. If, I'm know, thinking, I'm thinking something, um, something relatively simple here. Okay, so... We've got a little corner that's cut right there, uh, but it, this edge comes all the way up. So I think I'm gonna have this this little part of that miter um, extend that away. So we're just gonna take, yeah, that seems about right. So I just made a little notch on here and then we're gonna try to cut this at a right angle. We on screen. We're on screen. Oop. All right. There we are. And I think, yeah, we still need to use some hot glue for this. Otherwise, um, we run the risk of melting the uh, the foam underneath because this is not a particularly um, resistant paper. This is a, a very matte paper. I was trying to find stuff that was a little darker so it would contrast with uh, the MDF and the uh, plastic card. But there we go. All right. So there we go. We've got a, a base of something going there. So let's find just some other random stuff that we could throw on there that'll be thematically right. Maybe before we do that, let's let's finish kind of roughing out the rest of this and then we'll come back with a passive of, of finer details. I think it's probably gonna be safer, generally. Um, okay, um, now what goes on the back? Um, do you have a vision for what this building is or are you just kind of, uh, um, what's that word, freestyling as you go? I mean, I'm sort of freestyling as we go, but uh, we do have this piece that we started with and we talked about a little bit at the beginning of the stream, um, just as a, an, a, an idea of the type of textures and things that we want. Um, so we had talked about having these cantilevered areas off of the, the upper stories, uh, talked about having this, this big fan box kind of thing. Um, 
maybe uh, some of the, the wires and things we see running all over the place and under these awnings. Um, it's the same sort of stuff that inspired us to build the first building, um, and we're trying to make the companion building to, to that one. So that's generally what we're, what we're aiming for here. Um, okay, so let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else do we want to do? Let's... Okay. Um, let's do a little something to, to just break up the surface here. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know what, maybe this, this side on the back is where we have a little bit more of an industrial look and feel. Um, maybe this is the, the back area, like Justin said earlier, is, uh, is where you know, the dumpster goes and, and all that jazz. Uh, so let's see what we've got in the way of, yeah. It, it feels like almost this. like a cop out for my my brain because of what we sell. But like for whatever reason, the bottom floor to me just seems like a place where you were getting food, and that's where they were throwing trash away. I don't know why, but that's what I envisioned. A little okay. shop, little shack, food place. Okay. Um, I think we mentioned this earlier, but uh, a lot of the the details in these are going to be uh, sprued in so that um, they're preserved and you can use them. Some of them aren't, mostly just because um, it, if they were actually set with like a little micro joint, they'd be a real pain to get out. These just happen to still be sort of tension fit in the board there. Um, so those are not a guaranteed part, but I'm going to save them anyway because I'm a hoarder. Um, okay. Daria asks, do you think batch making buildings to fit a theme is more productive, or do you think individual projects might coalesce into something coherent? I think that if you've got a, a vision for what you want, um, there's no reason not to do it in a group. I mean, you're definitely going to stay more consistent that way. Um, so I think doing doing batch work is, is always a good idea in that situation. But um, if you want something that is... If your goal is to have a, a set of terrain that has a theme, then I do it in a batch. If your goal is to express yourself artistically and um, just do something fun, then um, I'd say do them one at a time. Savor each of them individually. Now, uh, as a follow-up, um, if you were to do them individually and mm -hmm. enjoy it artistically, are there any tips you might have for trying to make sure that there's something that connects them a little bit? If each one is slightly different because you did them at different times, but you still want them to fit a certain, co be coherent on the table, is there any recommendations you'd have for that? I would say use consistent materials. Um, or if you're not using consistent materials, have a reason why. Like if, if there's buildings within your city that are completely different themed, um, like you've got stuff that is, you know, part of a you know, the, the slums and you have parts that are part of like the suburbs or something else. You've got like the, the, the ritzy, um, you know, shopping district that's just separated by this big wall or something. Or even like a church. Um, cause those yeah. Are or a church. Yeah. yeah. Cause I mean, even, even in, uh, you know, almost anywhere churches tend to stand out from the surrounding area, um, and don't normally hold the same sort of stylistic, um, architecture that that everything else does they're gonna have their own thing um so if if you have a reason to make it different make it different um but if you're trying to keep it all super consistent um i would say number one thing stick to the same materials you'll tend to end up with similar looking things if you just stick to the same materials and then maybe pick two or three things that you feel are important to the look of it in your world um like the doors need to be like this, or the windows are frequently like this, or all of the roofing is like this. Um, and even if it's not exactly the same, having it be like close, um, you know, same style, but different make, you know, like uh, they're both Toyotas, but you know, one's, one's a Camry and one's a Corolla or something where it's like, yeah, they're not identical, but they look pretty darn close. I, I think, I think that, you know, choosing and prioritizing what things make your city or your buildings your buildings, um, and then keeping your materials consistent is going to yield probably the, the 
best results if you want to 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 do it over a prolonged period of time instead of a batch. That was a really good question. Thank you. That was a, I think yeah, that's, thank uh, you. that's pretty good information. Okay. So, um, we've got these pieces. I think I'm going to sort of bracket off this side. Okay. okay. There we go. There's one of them. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to grab a piece of plastic card here. And this is our textured card from the uh, the Rust set. Um, and I'm going to make us a little roll-up door here. Um, let's just use that and... So we've got that piece, and then we need to trim that down. Yeah, okay. I'm not super worried about that being perfectly flat. Okay. Yeah, yeah that should be good. Okay. You gotta start yelling at me if I get off the screen, man. Oh, sorry. I was trying to check Facebook messages on there. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I think that. And then we bring this piece in on the side. I think that'll make a nice little door thing, and then we'll we'll trim up the uh, the edges. Um, that'll be easy enough. I don't want to get this too overly hot just because plastic will start melting. Okay. There we go. And then make sure we get that going the same way as the other one. Yep. Okay. Gotta keep that nice and thin. Okay. So there we go. We've got we got the, the beginnings of a, a cool little industrial door here. Um, we need to cap this off uh, on the top and maybe maybe we can just have it run a little bit longer and overhang there. Um, let's see. I'm just gonna grab some of the other pieces that we cut off earlier. Actually, is that like, that's like perfect. We just like accidentally did, did an awesome. All right, here we go. Let's... that. Okay, so now we've got our little roofing part there, but as you see, we've got a little bit of a, a sloppy area around the edges, uh, but not to worry. We're going to use some of the plastic stripping that we cut earlier and try to trim that in just a bit. So, I'm going to... Okay, let's orient this a little differently here just so I can do this easily. So, oh, still need to trim that down just a hair. Okay, can we closer? Yep, I think we're there. Oh, I guess still need a little more trimming. A little more trimming. Okay, there we are. Okay, so now we've got this plate up here at the top that'll cap that off. Um, and in fact, you know what? You know what? I think I've changed my mind. Changed my mind. I want something a little bit more beefy up there at the top. We're gonna snag one of these pieces. I'm just thinking of, you know, the, the type of little roll-up mechanism that this might have. And I think that uh, I pro oh, that's way short. Super short. Um, what else we got? Do you have gribblies that could have went alongside it? Like on the left and right? That yeah, both and, and we're, we're, we'll get there. Okay. Um, Okay, so um, let's grab our pencil here this time. 
so we don't have to trim this a whole mess of times. Okay, now we could do this with just a, a knife and a straight edge, but I've got these handy miter cutters and this stuff actually cuts through a strip of MDF pretty cleanly, so I like having that guy around. All right, did we get it? Did we do it? Yep, yeah. okay. So, yep. So there we go. We got that piece in there. Okay, and because we've got something other than just the foam board to glue to, we can just use a little bit of super glue. Okay. All right. All right, so now um, some of these other pieces that we've got on hand might be helpful for this. Uh, I've already popped out a handful of these, and I think those could run right down the edges. Um, I think that we need to get them to, to end on the valley so that they line up with this guy a little bit better. Um, and there are some of the strips end on a peak and some end on a valley, so let's just grab the ones that are already like that first. So just run a little bit of, little bit of super glue down the edge. I guess the question is, do we want to do it like that or like that? I think that's better. I like that better too. Okay. And then we'll do the other side. cutters. Oh, and we knocked that out. All right. Let's make sure that stays seated. Okay. It looks like we got a little bit of, a little bit of sharpness there at the bottom. I'm just gonna use, use my blade. Just trim a little bit of that off. If I can do it. I'm breaking everything. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue on the bottom of that just so we don't get any weird fraying or anything. There we go. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Um, and we could still probably use this piece at the bottom here. We're just gonna need to trim a little bit off. Um, use that as kind of the, the little footer piece um, to uh, maybe put a little handle on or something. That'd be just fine. There we go. Okay. Looking good so far. Okay, so this, this area on the side looks like a perfect place for some kind of little vent or maybe a window. So let's go back over to our card. And let's find something cool. We already used one of these style ones. Yeah, maybe we'll use one of these. Um, yeah, I'm kind of digging the, the big octagonal ones here. So let's just make sure first, I guess, that that's actually going to go where we want it to. Yep, should go just fine. And then we will trim that right out. Okay. And then trim the middle out, which has a, another little part in it. Yeah. You honestly don't need to have your blade extended as far as I'm doing there. I'm mostly doing it because uh, I need to not have my hand block the camera so bad. <laughs> All right, so now I'm thinking, let's see, do we want it high or low? High or low? I'm thinking high on this one because we went low on that one. So the thing that's really cool about this is I didn't even realize where you're going. I'm, I'm on the back side here. I can see the screen. Um, <laughs> 
but I thought you were just putting a vent. So I feel like you're going to be doing some layering here. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, at first glance, I saw these scribblies and I'm like, oh, cool vent thing. And just by using the pieces that are there, you can, like, get some three-dimensionality three -dimensionality out of the flat surface of the bits, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some of them that are just sort of, I guess, intended to be able to be used on their own. And there's nothing that that says you can't use this one by itself. Uh, you most certainly could. Um, it also, honestly, you, you could have used the little resin rivets on the edges instead of that top plate. That would look good, too. Yeah, that's true. In fact, why don't we do that on a different, yeah. different piece? Um, okay, so there we go. We got, uh, we got our nice little... Uh, vent there. Okay, so what would go underneath this vent? Um, I imagine like some little, some little piece of machinery or something. In fact, let's let's not necessarily lean too heavily on the resin stuff quite yet. Um, I'm thinking maybe let's snag one of these little things out of the middle here. So we got that. What about your uh, ultra thin acrylic stuff? Um. Yeah, I think I think that that sitting next to what I'm about to do would actually be pretty good. Yeah, so, cool. all right, on this one, I'm just gonna poke out a handful of these little guys. Come on, let go. Yeah, we'll take four of those out. Okay. So I type in the chat. More on the story. Be safe with hobby knives. Yeah. And then uh, Daria says, "I've never once found cutting away from yourself to ever achieve anything." And Clamble says, "You have more control, more power if you cut toward yourself." Oddly. I cut towards myself all the time, as Austin's doing right now, but if you're not comfortable, cut away. Yep, agreed. The The thing is, like, I'm never, I will, if the if the knife is in my right hand, I'm never going to put my left hand in the way. I find that it's very difficult for, for me to accidentally get to a place where I, like, contract my hand fast enough to actually cut the same hand that's holding the knife with it. Now, that's not to say that it can't happen. It's just with a very sharp knife it's very difficult to lose control. Um, Cause I mean, if you're, if you're like really pushing, push away. If I, I wouldn't sit here and say like, ah, and like accidentally slice my, my thumb on my left hand open or anything. But um, yeah, do, do what you feel safe doing. I've got a lot of experience with this and can, I, I can I can handle it. <laughs> I've cut myself plenty of times, but uh, it's never it's never been from that. It's been from other dumb stuff. All the cuts I've done to myself with hobby knives have always been doing something dumb. Like when you were talking about pushing away, going, eh! mm -hmm. uh, I've done that and I've slipped and I've caught a finger that was not on the hand I was cutting with because yeah. I didn't have control, oddly, of the thing I was holding. Yeah. And that's a lot of times that's how it goes. Daria says, but the stream needs more blood for the blood god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um all right, we've got these little pieces, and I, I I don't know if it was clear what I was pulling out, but I've got these little sort of trapezoid pieces that I pulled out of the ladder. Um and I'm gonna make a couple little fins here. Um I'm gonna flip these up on their edges just so that I can do a, a quick and easy transplant once I put some glue on here. I'm gonna kind of mark out the middle and then split it into quarters here. And then I'm gonna put each of these in the middle of those regions, just trying to keep it evenly spaced. So I'm gonna put a little dab of glue in the middle of each of those. Okay. And I'm going to use my knife and pick one of these up, set it down that way, wait for it to stick. Okay, on to the next one. Okay. Last one, right there. Oh, come on, stay with me. Okay, all right. So now we've got this little piece here, and got some some cool three dimensionality. Um, okay, I think we're we're good, and I'm just gonna trim away some of the the uh, sprue material there. Okay, let's. There we go. All right. 
Looks Ours, smooth. Those, those fins could even have made uh, a little makeshift uh, ladder of sorts. Yeah, possible. that's true. That's true. <laughs> the waste material from the ladders made a new ladder. Yeah. And in fact, you know what? Speaking of rungs and things, let's actually grab us one more. We're just gonna stick that guy right at the bottom. We're gonna center that up. There we go. And we got ourselves a little handle for the bottom. Brush for hire from Twitch says hello. <laughs> Well, hello there. All right. So, let's see. Okay, so we, we showed these off earlier. They're a little hard to tell what the heck's going on here. Um, for those of you who joined later, um, you can see them on this building in a couple of spots. So, like, here, there. Um, we got that little guy in there. And some more there and there. Or there. Um... So we, they 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 look good once you get them painted, but they're a little tough to to see while they're still basically clear. They've got a blue backer on them that protects them while they're being laser cut. Um, I think I would be remiss if we did not include one of the universal griblies. So let's see if we can just do that real quick, like. All right, go on. There we are. So I think we're going to put one of those somewhere in, I don't know, somewhere over here. Um, so I'm going to pick that up with my knife. We're going to add just a tiny bit of this super thin glue. Oh, and then we're going to knock it off. Hilarious. Good job, Austin. Oh, but you did get just enough glue to glue it onto your hand. Comedy of errors. Incoming. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. My goodness, that looks real janky. <laughs> Universal Gribbly, you are not helping me right now. Dari says hashtag good job Austin. Yep. <laughs> and ironically enough, we have a new follower, Thompson Tech. Hey. I don't know who that is. It's my brother. Oh. Well, hello, Han Solo. That's how I remember his name. <laughs> Every time. All right. So let's try this again. All right. We got our, we got our little gribbly. You know what? I'm not going to even bother with that. We're just going to put some glue down here, and we're going to drop it on there, and we're going to hope that we can turn it quick enough. Boop. Yeah. Brush for hire. Um, Austin here is working with... Uh, some basic materials you can get from the hobby store, which I'm sure you are familiar with, but a lot of the accent pieces he's working with are things that we are going to have in our um, um, the, uh, terrain takeout box. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if, if this is your cup of tea and things that you like, um, get with us on uh, social media, send us a message or something, and uh, we can have a chat. Uh, we've been looking for content creators who might be interested in what we uh, are going to be putting out soon. So if this is something that's up your alley, feel free to talk to us. Okay. I don't know. Do we? I think I think maybe a little piece of plastic card will help round that out a little bit. I don't want to go too overboard because we got a lot of cool stuff going on here. Um, I can, you know what? Maybe maybe we. Let's go with this. Uh, Daria, uh, I think this is a question I could probably answer while Austin's uh, doing some thinking over here. Uh, the current uh, uh, train takeout kit. Is uh, got a set amount of things it has, and it's generally the same every time, uh, give or take a, a you know piece that falls out of the sprue or doesn't. Uh, but you should generally have the same stuff. Uh, if the this is received well by the DIY community, um, I think Austin would probably be doing some other variations. But uh, uh, when you buy it, you know exactly what you get, and each one, if we do more, would be themed. Uh, so you kind of have an idea of what you're getting when you get it. So there's no like booster pack type thing. If you want these bits, you get these bits. Yeah, I, yeah. It's it. When he says booster pack, he means there's not going to be anything random about yeah. it. So. <laughs> Daria says, "Oh my God, theme boxes." Yeah. And it has a bunch of like wide open eyes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, having some stuff that's a little bit more industrial, having some things that are a little bit more high tech sci-fi, a little more gothic. 
We'd mm -hmm. like for whatever bits and things you get out of the box to be uh, roughly in the realm of what you want for the uh, the task at hand, and maybe expose you to a few things you didn't think might work well for that aesthetic. Yeah, and realistically, especially if you're bringing you know a a, a good bit of material to the table already, um, this is this is meant to help accent things like we're not trying to make every single thing like some of this is plastic card a lot of it's foam board um you should be able to make several several buildings out of um what you what you get out of the set okay and, uh, daria to uh, uh expand upon your your statement there again um uh, if this is received well from the community uh we would absolutely probably be interested in bringing some to a uh, con um you know, it just all depends on how it's, it's received as to uh, what uh, what we prioritize for, for con stock because we only have so much space. That is true. Okay, so let's do let's do something a little bit different on this side, mostly because we've we've been uh, we've been talking about having um, have it get wider as it as it moves up, right? So as as we we move up to um, the, the top of the building is just going to get wider and wider and wider. Um, and I think that even though this doesn't necessarily have a lot of curves in the, the paneling, I think that maybe we could try to do that ourselves. Or at least have something that breaks up the silhouette in a way that, uh, that does that for us. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to... I'm going to pop out more things than what we want from this sheet, obviously. Yeah, I'm just going to take it all out. That's fine. You know, uh, you'd think I paid more attention because uh, I helped cut these today, but that top left piece that didn't come out, that also looked really interesting. Yeah, you for know, sure. It's, it's not quite a, it's not quite the like portion of a circle type thing. It's pretty cool. Okay, so let's see here. How tall is that? Okay, yeah. So that's like, that's pretty huge. Um, Daria does ask another question. Yep. What is the height of those stairs? Um, the stairs are. Oh, you have a ruler. I was trying to hand it a measuring tape. Ha! Um, if we hadn't boosted it with another piece of MDF, it would be right at three inches. So a lot of the stuff in the kit is going to be sort of three inch focused. Um, that is to say, uh, you know, we know that a lot of wargaming folks tend to um, use the three inch mark as their um, their basic story height. So. Which is great, because Daria says, um, with the, the follow-up to that, that statement, what are the height of the stairs? I play a lot of Dead Zone, and as you might know, it's uh, a cubic based on three inches. Yep. Yep, that's not a mistake. A lot of war games use that as their sort of basic unit of height, as far as like, you know, height one, height two, height three, um, or single story, second story, third story, yada, yada, yada. So, yeah. We have made your day. <laughs> okay. All right. So. <laughs> and Brush Fire goes, beard. <laughs> Sorry. We, we've been uh, focused on what he's working on. We haven't gone back and forth. Um, yeah. Um, and that's the first time some guys have seen the beard. He goes, more beard. I mean, you can set it up to be, you know, part to, uh, or I guess, as long as you can do it without. Messing with the stream. <laughs> he demands a beard cam. <laughs> so here's a fun fact, if, 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 or fun question. If we were to try and schedule another hobby stream, um, or maybe a special one in December, who would want to see Austin in a beard with uh, mm -hmm. some some lights on it, some some holiday lights in his beard? I know he's got them. Who wants to see them? You're killing me, man. Hey, if it gets if it gets some hype, hype is good. All right, it's a little tough to see what I'm doing here because my hand is obscuring most of that. Okay, great. Um, Rush for Hire, we don't have any um, commands yet. So this is our second stream, and uh, we have upped the production quality uh, a lot. I was going to say tenfold. I don't know, maybe more, who knows. Uh, from the last one, but as we progress, we will uh, slowly add the normal things. So we'll have a hype command at some point. Okay, just adding a little bit of uh, accelerator here. That should be his uh, one of his emotes when the affiliate status comes through. A beard. <laughs> and a gray alien with your beard. That'll be the Dr. Death right there. There we go. <laughs> okay, 
So just holding holding this tight till we get all set. I think we might have to throw a little extra glue in here. Ooh, come on. Ooh. A little uncoordinated there. Rush for Hire says, I am digging that curved MDF doing that with the styrene. Yeah. It's all kinds of fun ways to, to get around the whole notion that MDF and, and this kind of laser cut stuff can only be flat. Which mm -hmm. we've been doing a lot of stuff with. Uh, would you, Austin, uh, yeah. putting on spot a little bit, would you be interested in showing a preview of something that is using styrene and breaks up the flat surface? Uh, sure. Oh, great. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Rush for hire. Hold up and wait a minute. I'm about to bring some awesome terrain. Uh oh. Come on. Okay. Whew. Just so high energy. All right. Still got to get a little bit more behind here. Oh no, stop it, stop it. Okay, please behave. <laughs> All right. All right, we're just gonna reinforce these edges significantly here, just to make sure we don't have any peel away fun. Been a while. It's been a while. I haven't seen these in their finished state. The weathering or, or light weathering on the bottom edge there is really nice. So uh, for those of you guys listening in chat, I put Austin on the spot a little bit. Uh, this is a, a preview you're going to get to see here in a moment of uh, some unreleased terrain that is coming the end of the month. So when you see it, hopefully you get hype. <laughs> if you don't get hype, we're all going to cry because uh, we put some effort into making some real cool affordable terrain for the holidays. And I think the paint job is pretty dope. All right, hang tight one second. Get that trimmed up. Do, 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 do. All right, so. So the idea being that we could potentially have this going up to the next level. Um, we could do the same sort of curvature on the inside, make ourselves a little ducting thing and have this be a giganto version of um, the, the little framework angles that we're using over here be something huge and structural or maybe it's some sort of you know vent or chute going down to the the garage level all right so you guys want to see something cool we look awesome space real quick we're about to see some cool stuff you made a thing all right so we've got these lovely new pods uh this is part of a set called the uh the arc set justin actually uh help me develop and name this uh, you want to tell them about it a little bit, Justin? Yeah, so uh, the idea for this, for ARC, is Archaeology, recover, er, Recovering and Containment, ARC. Uh, the idea for me is like this, uh, I'm saying this is some type of um, crew or um, corporation, something. They come in and they, they find some like old Xeno terrain or, or some long lost uh, 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 settlements and they set up camp while they go through the artifacts, but sometimes they come across things that... Uh, it can't just be recovered. Maybe they have to contain it. Perhaps it's living metal or old uh, runes from the Eldar, something like that, where they have to, to contain it because they can't quite control it. So very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reason I want to bring it in, not just to get it hype because uh, we want to get some hype, uh, but also because uh, you're talking about uh, breaking up the, the flat nature of NDF with a curvature, and this was a really unique use of styrene for us to create these pods using mm -hmm. NDF and a, a very small amount of another material. Yep. Indeed, indeed. So these are two of the, the buildings from that set, and it'll be um, a handful, each of these, plus uh, some objective things, and um, was it barricades? Yeah, barricades. Yeah, I didn't grab all the griblies, yeah. but uh, there's a little Easter egg in the background. We don't have to show it if you want to, but oh. uh, it'll go, it'll pair real nicely with this uh, this archaeology, ar this old site. Yeah, there buildings. we go. <laughs> Oh, D uh, Dari says Dark Age Train, and then says, "Oh my God, let me see a Mass Effect minis game for these." Yeah. And 
Uh, ironically enough, when uh, I started pitching some ideas for some of this, uh, I may or may not have been playing Mass Effect Andromeda, and there's an unreleased piece of uh, prototype terrain that was literally inspired directly from that game. So, yeah. There is my sandpaper. I knew I had some in here earlier. Do you want me to go get you a piece of sandpaper? Yes, please. Okay. Back to the paint can. <laughs> All right. So, I just want to use some sandpaper to, to sand these down a little bit. They're relatively there already, but I think that we'd be better off if we actually sand it down. Just in case we, you know, put something around the edge. We won't have anything sticking up in a weird way. Um, also, kind of dig these as some sort of little thing. Oh, actually, you know what? This could totally be uh, a couple of pieces like that right there on the edge. This could be brackets to help channel some uh, wiring and stuff going down from the uh, the upper floor. I think that could be real cool. Um, in the meantime, maybe we just go ahead and see if we can press in an inner thing just so we seal that off. Um, I think for this, because that's such a, a harsh curve, I'm going to sort of pre-bend this uh, just a little bit. Maybe I'll use this piece. So we get an even bend. Yeah. Sort of rolling, rolling, rolling. There we go. Yeah, that's that's a much better starting place to try to get that melded in there. Okay, so we will throw a little bit of super glue on the edges of those. So this person we don't know named Thompson Tech says you need a tiny miniature finger plane. Yeah. I don't know why you're pretending like we don't know him. <laughs> I mean, I just thought it was funny. Oh. You know, you know me. Sometimes I say the dumb things. Yup. A little, little tiny miniature finger plane would, uh, would work for this. Did I miss something? Is, it, is there a plane flying around? No, are you, are you are you messing with me? <laughs> no, I'm confused. What we Do you know about? what a plane is? As in, like a woodworking tool. I don't. Oh, okay. It is uh, a. a... <laughs> <laughs> I know some things. No, it's a um, uh, basically a blade held at an angle, fitted into like a little shoe kind of thing, and you just skirt it across the the top and it basically just shaves little pieces off bit by oh, bit okay, okay, okay. that's a plane Got uh, it. when they use it it creates it almost looks like uh, chocolate flakes but wood yeah flakes. yeah like little little yeah. ribbony pieces that's a plane yeah. so a finger plane is one that is smaller i literally thought he was saying you needed to have an airplane on your finger i'm no. not joking and i was like okay little tiny airplane that'd be cool <laughs> I don't think we can make it out of MDF, but we we can do something. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I didn't know what a, I don't know, a square. I didn't know what a square was. So I started working here. Yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> Justin Justin doesn't have. Um, I don't know the things. A a normal uh, hand tools education here. Didn't necessarily have a whole lot of cause to use most of those you're your, growing your up. brother says I'm so sorry for this confusion <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh, just, it's just Justin looking silly that's all I wish I was doing it for show but I'm not <laughs> oh someone says ask me shall proceed um Micro mini brass hand plane set wood finish planer hobby prep. So is that from Micromark? Uh, it's on Amazon. You should. Oh, okay, okay. There, I'm gonna leave it up. It's actually pretty neat looking. I don't know. We buy all kinds of tools here and sometimes use them. Thank you, New, <laughs> uh, new Way Designs. That uh, I'm gonna show it to him afterwards. Okay. Your brother says beautiful. <laughs> he said uh, New Way says it's basically the same as Micromark. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, let's let's rough up this surface as well. You just want 
to do this while we still can easily. Um, as roughing up this plastic before we try to paint it later or before we try to glue more stuff to it is gonna make it just a lot easier to work with. So now we've got essentially this, this tube um, and I really wanna use it as ductwork going up into the, the upper floor. And to make it even more super duper cool, let's, um, where's my pencil? There we go. Let's figure out where our like roughly third marks are here. Okay, so there we go. And we're gonna just draw those all the way out to the edge there. And we're gonna take these little guys here. Drop a little bit of glue right under there. One cannot do hobby stuff without gluing their fingers to the hobby Oh, stuff. yeah. It, you want to talk about the way? That is the way. I mean, I was, I was saying that in my head as though I was Sean Bean, so. One does not simply do hobby stuff without gluing their fingers to hobby stuff. Yep. Okay. So there we go. Now we've got these two nice little bracket pieces so that once we get this on here, we can run some wires underneath and have it go straight into the side of the building. And in fact, um, maybe we can make ourselves a little area. I think one of these would be great as a spot for the, the cables to actually disappear into. Um, let's, let's just use one of these little guys. One of the little belt buckle style ones. Okay, so now, okay, I can't really set that on its other side there. So, actually, we can flip it over, and that way we can just register it to that side. Um, okay, so let's get this hot glue gun a going. Uh, asymmetry wins again. Okay. All right, so now we got that. And right under here, I'm thinking we could, let's flip that back over so we can see what we're doing again. I'm gonna take our little sort of belt buckle bracket deal. Isn't that what you call the D-clip? No, a D, a, D, a, D, a, D, a D ring looks more like whoop, half of that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, here we go. Just go ahead and get that right there. So what we're going to use that for is um, if, we, if we run some, some wires and things underneath there, I want some place for it to disappear into that makes sense. Uh, we could just punch a hole and have it run through the side of the building. Um, but most of the time you're not going to have stuff just disappear into a hole that is perfectly in plane with the building. Uh, you want to have some sort of connector or coupler or something to sort of, I guess, cushion the, uh, the transition from hanging wire to wire in a channel. So. Okay. Scott 24 says magic garage. <laughs> okay. So what else do we, what else do we want on this side of the building? I think that we've got a nice big open area there. I really like that scaffolding stuff you used for the side of the door, uh, the, the rear door. Yeah. Something like that that looks like it's reinforcing like the side of the building and it okay. comes up to the, the floor plate. I think it could be really cool to me. Okay. Well, we've got some other types of stuff over here, so maybe, maybe we oh, yeah. um, maybe let's let's use one of these guys. Ooh. Um, and it kind then, of reinforces the like industrial siding that you got going on with yeah. that. Yeah. Um. I think that some some piece from here might also look nice. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's let's snag one of these. And we'll pop those pieces out. Maybe we'll even use them on that same side. But um, you know, we could have something that. Oh, like the floor brace. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So you got that on that side, and then maybe we could still have this little guy. Okay, come on. Work with me here. Come up on that side. Yeah. So we kind of have it sort of boxed in a little bit, but um, 
for painting purposes, also yeah. adds some extra cool things for like dry brushing to hit and stuff. Oh yeah, too. yeah for sure. Um, okay, um, if we set that there, if we okay, good, 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 good. Okay. And so uh, what you just did right there it looks like something that uh, someone who knows what you're doing might know, someone who doesn't. <laughs> Not. So it looked like instead of going straight into the blue, you came in at an angle, pushed it in, slid out, and yeah. wiped off the blue. Yeah, I, 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 I came in closer to that edge. If you, if you look at it here, there's a little bit of a lip there. I want some, some extra dry brush area there. Um, but I pressed it in closer to the edge and then I pushed back, um, mostly because if there's going to be a, a nasty edge, I'd rather it be on the inside where we're less likely to see it. Okay, so I'm thinking having that out more like here still gives us some room in the middle if we wanted to put like a little strip or something. Like we don't have to necessarily do something huge, just maybe something to break it up a little bit. Um, Oh yeah, still gotta use hot glue here, cause yeah. Okay. So let's get that one here. Okay. Down at the bottom. Just snip that off. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I think I think maybe we just do that. Um, actually, I think I think we might want to figure out what the the footprint of our our next floor is going to look like here. Um, obviously, we want it to be bigger than the bottom floor, um, but this is a part where we at least need to generally know what kind of size we're working with here. Um, so, thinking from here, we need to go all the way out past here so we need at least seven inches I'm thinking probably like eight and then we want some overhang so maybe maybe another seven so like seven by eight I like that that sounds like it's gonna be awesome a lot of space it is a lot of space um and we'll still probably add some extra cantilevered area out past it too so um just out of curiosity okay Seven. Okay, just generally trying to eyeball this here. Okay, let's get let's at least get through through the rest of this face and maybe cut the the top plate for the the next floor and then we'll take a short break and be back in just a couple minutes. All right, let's get that there. Malev okay. says, this is looking so fly. <laughs> Thanks, Malev. Okay, that's not quite going to fit there. I think Malev is pretty fly himself. Got a record deal, making new flows. Thanks, man. Okay. Just capping that off because it was a little, little short. We, we made this slightly over three inches just because we wanted to go above that. Um, okay. I think we got some we got some room down here maybe for a little something. I'm thinking maybe something that sticks out a little bit more. Um, I'm kind of thinking this might be a good place for one of our other like little resin griblies here. So oh, we've I got we got these guys, and I'm thinking this thing right here is the perfect shape for uh, for down there. Um, so let's let's go ahead and give that the old chop. There oh, we go. Got a useless wizard in here too. Hey, What's buddy. That? Okay, so we're just gonna trim, 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 trim. Oh, I'm sorry. Emery board to get the rest of that off of there. All right. So yeah, thinking that somewhere under here would be cool. 
Um, yeah, I think I think out there at the edge where you're definitely going to see it. Um, yeah, let's give it a little bit of breathing room there. So we'll put a little dab of hot glue here. Uh, Kegers Senior says, in the event one doesn't have ready access to a hot glue gun, what glue would you recommend as a substitute? Uh, probably PVA, white glue. That would that would work for most of this. Um, the only thing that I would be more con uh, that I would actually be concerned about, like getting stuff to stick, would be when you're doing any kind of uh, plastic like this. I would say would definitely rough up your surfaces a lot, uh, a lot more. Um, but if you're if you're doing stuff like like this duct work here, um, if you can super glue the plastic to the MDF, and then the MDF can get uh, white glued onto the paper. So you may not be able to get the white glue to stick to that really sharp edge of the, the plastic and hold it, but you could get it on this. Um, and you could also, you know, cap these things off relatively easily with some other MDF, just trim it down and get it plugged in there. And you got a much bigger surface area to, to have the, the glue grab onto. And uh, as they are going on with the, the Magic Garage theme here, because uh, it might not fit the car, uh, I would say that in our our sci-fi, you know, dystopian, whatever future, like I just imagine that perhaps there's not a car in there, perhaps there's some cool sci-fi motorcycle that comes out. Yeah. Like that's that's where he parks, and he can come out of the garage, go and fix it, do whatever, and goes upstairs, and whoever is here wants to have a party, go to sleep, hang out, whatever they want to do. Yeah. Or maybe if this is a little workshop thing, uh, whatever is being made um, is, once it's made, is too big to go out through a normal door, but is easy enough to store. So like, I don't know, it's a factory for giant balloon animals or something. Hey, or, you know, <laughs> it's like Hugh Jackman, real steel. He walks in there and he works on his little stompy rock and sock room, comes out the back, goes to fight with his robots. There you go. There you go. No, I think, I think motorcycle garage is actually a pretty, uh, legitimately reasonable uh, the garage. Like, um, like full on, like cyberpunk motorcycles. What I'm thinking of, and then yeah. like synthwave music and neon lights. Yeah, robots. <laughs> um, do you feel like we need some kind of details on the side of this? I feel like we need some kind of details on the side of that. Um, at least something small. Something maybe small, perhaps. Maybe. Yeah. Um. What we think? Some kind of strip. Or, you know. <laughs> it's to that time of night, and we're not sure what detail to use on the, uh, uh, the duct work. Okay, all right, you know what? Are we overthinking it? Are we I, think, I think we are. I think this is, this is a nice little, little pill-shaped piece. I think that we could easily put it on the side there, or like there, and that'll, that'll be cool. I'm just going to throw that on there, and that's going to be that. Sometimes a lot of just gotta throw it on there. yeah. A lot of times, uh, that's just that's just how it goes. It's like, yeah, I think that looks cool, um, and it also gives us sort of an anchor point if we ever wanted to do something like this. So we got something to oh, dog on it. Can't quite get the snippers in there anymore. Come on, come on, Mister Knife. There we go. I think I, I think I may have popped that loose there. Okay, I'm just gonna have to be careful until I get this anchored onto whatever floor thing is gonna happen. Just kind of tack that on till we're till we're ready. Um, okay, so we've got some like little corners here now, and um, I'm gonna come in here with. Let me see if I can do this in a way that where I'm not blocking the camera again. Brush fire says Roomba garage. There you go. Well, because the, the upper part of this building is so large, it's entirely possible that this entire base area is sort of an elevator that takes stuff up, so who knows? Maybe it's just a, a garage door so that you can have a delivery and then the freight elevator that takes it up. There we go. That's a cool thing now. Alright, so, question is, I guess, do we want to have the same thing on the other side? Mm, I think... Am I overdoing it? I think you might be approaching overdoing it. Okay, alright, alright, alright. 
Okay. The Boston Shop says, I'm actually working on a table full of the Odenheim modular terrain Ooh. from an in-person Cyberpunk Red campaign. Okay. Sweet. This will give me all kinds of ideas for diving into scratch, uh, scratch building terrain that fits. Uh, yes, especially if you... Uh, you plan to design things that might uh, have holes and stuff in the same areas where some of our augments go. Mm -hmm. You might be able to like hook on doors or ladders, things like that, if you design your terrain, uh, your, your custom um, scratch built terrain properly. Yep, uh, we're also planning on releasing, uh, maybe not on Black Friday, but uh, later on, um, blank augments for all of our modular stuff so that if you wanted to, you could take an augment, uh, one of the blank augments, and then add any of this cool stuff onto it. Um, or foam board or bits from an existing kit uh, from you know GW or somebody else you want to integrate other parts into our modular kits no problem just you know basically it's a set of hooks and a plate and you just pile on whatever you want It'll be a whole bunch of them for not very much <laughs> brush for hire thank you for hanging out with us tonight hopefully we'll hear from, hear from you if this is some stuff you want to work with um, Bustin Chop says that's a great idea and Mimoff says really wants to see this on a hex base uh, Mimoff, is there a particular reason you want to see it on the hex space? Is there a type of game where you just think a hex space would look cool? Or like an actual just big hex plate? What were you thinking? When you say hex space, I think Battletech. But you could have also just meant like a hex base plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said Battletech. <laughs> cool. Uh, you, you missed it. I got attacked by the hose. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were laughing because you are like, Ooh, that's a big hex. No. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's cut back to the, the close cam here. All right. So... I've got this flexible hose here, and we've got a whole bunch of these that it fits into nicely. So we've got our um, ones like this that are, uh, they got two little latches or four or six. Um, I'm going to take one of the fours out. So let's, let's do that, and then we'll also do that one. And you know what? Let's also grab one of these guys here. Um, that's the right size yeah it is okay so here's what we're gonna do we I kind of want to have whatever's going on here um, Pull it down a little bit. oh sorry um, I, I want to have some wires and things going down from from the upper area to under here um, this won't quite fit through that area so instead of trying to like squish it um, I think I think we're just gonna have to have a, a separate sort of channel for it to go from like down here to you know up through this away. Um, so before we before we actually do that part, let's uh, let's get our plate cut for the the top. Um, I'm thinking we're gonna have to go back to the foam board here for that, which great. Uh, this is gonna be <laughs> a little tough to do now that I've got stuff all over my map. Um, so you know what? I'm just going to kind of roughly hack at it, and then we'll come back in and trim. Be careful when using hobby blades. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that was more for them. For them oh, guys. yeah. Okay. So now, um, we've got a nice flat edge there, um, and we need to go roughly... We said somewhere between six and seven. We're like right at the seven mark, so let's go like six and a half here. So I'm gonna mark. I'm not on screen. Sorry, I thought you were getting ready to come up. Um, and then we'll do six and a half here. Okay. Good. You can see the, the the mess in total here. Trim that edge off, we'll get a nice straight edge. And then uh, I think we said eight for the other dimension. So let's go to eight. And eight. isn't necessarily going to be um, the entirety of um, what's inside up top. Some of this will be, um, you know, overhang for, like, walkways and things. Like, I think that 
looking at this here, um, we don't necessarily want to, you know, just have the the stairs go up to a door and then it, you know, vanishes into unusable interior space. We want to have maybe some walkway areas that come around this way. Walkway sounds really cool. Okay, yeah. I like that. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, walkway sounds really cool. I was like, well, like I, as a word? I was, I was going to get into yeah, it. Words are cool too. Uh, but no, because like we have discussed, I don't know if you're going to do this, uh, but we have discussed uh, with this project some of the, the bits that are difficult to do. And yeah. And about doing railings and stuff. And I was going to be like, walkway with a railing. I don't know if you're going to do a railing, but I do think a walkway overhang type thing would be yeah. really cool. Because yeah. like, this places models can go. Yeah. And uh, especially with the the terrain where you don't have a playable interior, a really cool playable exterior is very cool. Agreed, agreed. All right, so now we just sort of need to figure out how are we going to center this up? Or wh where do we want this to, to land on our our building here? Like, do we want to have like just a little overhang on this side and then have like a much bigger area this side? We might even like take a little like chunk out of the corner there. So what if one side, um, you, you got an idea of how you want it to look and mm -hmm. there's some asymmetry. So instead of it being a square, you do some cut-ins or something. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is okay. like if you if you took, like if you cut in like there, um, so that more or less you've got this nice centered up area, but then yeah. like that's gone. We I have think... a question about what the uh, estimated MSRP is going to be on this box. Um, I think that, um, based on conversations that we had, the, the variety box is probably going to be 50. Um, we, it's, it's got, uh, if you didn't already see, oh, did we ever fix the, the VOD stuff? I don't know if that's set up, but it will be on Facebook. It's on Facebook. Okay. All right. Shadaria is on. Okay. So, um, at the beginning of the, the stream, we went through everything in the, the box. So it's, what is that like? eight different sheets of MDF details and then uh, another eight of like card detail and then a whole bunch of resin pieces and some acrylic and a ton of rods and tubes and some flex hose. Um, so it's, it's more or less just like a sampler grab bag of stuff just to see what you like and what works. And then shortly after that, we like we're, we're launching the, the variety set first just to kind of see what sticks. Um, we like what's in this pack, but not everybody's gonna to wanna to build a building exactly the same way that we did. So um, we're hoping to get some feedback on it and then use that to launch um, a variety of smaller packs and uh, different themed stuff. Uh, and I don't know if it'll take place with this, but I did flip that setting for us. So it'll store our broadcast for up to two weeks. Okay. Switch. Cool, cool. All right, yeah, I think uh, I think that that configuration there is going to look nice. So, um, you know, if we if we do this this way, yeah, yeah, because if we if we have something that comes around that way, I think that'll that'll be pretty interesting. Okay, so let's make sure we've got. There's such cool things. I know this is um, uh, some extra shameless self-promotion here, uh, but it makes me think of, I think it's um, Bolt Hole. You've got the workshop desk, I think. Yeah. Some of those things like that and little rubies from that will look really good with this. Like mm -hmm. an area where there's like a little workshop stand, like up top maybe or down below, wherever, where it's got those rubies. Like it would have been perfect. So taking some of the extra bits you might have from uh, our stuff or other kits and, and combining those with this is a really cool thing. Yeah. I, I agree. I think, uh, you know, if I, if I wasn't trying to, to keep myself generally limited to um, just the, the bits pack and some, some foam board and plastic card and things, I would 100% be using, you know, the, the rust point tires and bricks and things. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Um, and uh, the dumpsters, in-city trash cans, pallets. Sounds like ideas for other theme packs. Yeah, uh, I think that, you know, while there will be some recycling happening from existing kits, um, we're going to try to bring, you know, a, a greater degree of also original content. 
grayed out production says fifty dollars feels more than reasonable for everything you get, especially yeah. if it also includes resin slash acrylic bits and rods and tubes. Yep. Uh, I think there's one rod. I don't know if you showed it. What, was there mm -hmm. a rod we were going to change out because of cutting it was difficult? That oh no, I, I think that um, I think that we were going to change out the white just so all of them are clear. Okay. Okay. And actually, the, the, the tube, I think we might change out for something else. That's the one I was thinking of. Okay. Uh, the, the, the guy I got feedback from was saying that one might be difficult for the average consumer to cut. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think that you can cut it fairly easily with one of the, the razor knives, but sure. that's also not necessarily as common a tool. But then again, I mean, if you're, if you're doing scratch building stuff, uh, I think there's some degree of assumptions that we have to make about what kind of tools you have access to. Sure. Uh, Great Out also says, add ten dollars of foam core and a bottle of Aline's tacky glue, and you're all set. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> yeah the tacky glue actually is is a that's legit. But um, I would say if I guess you know if we were cutting down the foam board, sure. Well, was, but I like that's so. For us. I think he was just saying oh. <laughs> add that on to whatever they add and they're okay. ready to roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bucks and they're ready to make stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't take a whole lot more. Um, ah, Malev, uh, oh Malev, oh this is great because uh, if this is a challenge for him to do it, I bet it could happen. He says, "Question: Is there a shape that comes in that pack that you could use for a Star Trek-like transporter pad? Sort oh, of like for sure. That could go on the ground. Yeah. Boom! I switched over to the can. It's like we've got all kinds of circles and things. We've got a bunch so of different... Your, on your left over there, some of the event stuff circles. Yeah. And using that in conjunction could make a really interesting, like, multi-tiered, like, teleportation pad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of, like, arcs and vents and things. He says, I mean, it's not, but if he wants to add that, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. So... I've got just a spool of wire here, and while, you know, this is not necessarily within the stuff that I was just talking about trying to stick with, um, you know, just a handful of, of wire is probably a pretty accessible thing for most, most folks. Um, I do have a question about the yeah. wire. I was thinking about it the other night, because I, I was thinking of trying to do something custom. Um, what if I had a bunch of old cell phone charger cables that I never can use again? Could I sure. cut the, the sheets off and use those, you think? Yeah, why not? There you go. Yeah. Use uh, what you got. Yeah, Trash I mean... can be your bits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought you were about to say something else. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm keeping it G. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, so um, I'm thinking maybe we use another one of the, the little um, little frame pieces to uh, create a place for that to disappear to into the floor above. Um, and I think that, um, we're gonna, we're gonna do better. Okay, so let's maybe, what's gonna be our best way to do this here? Um, I'm just gonna pull out a whole bunch of this. And then, gonna fold this in half. And then. Fold in half again. And I've kind of let it get a little bit unruly and not quite all the way even here, um, at least at that end. Um, and we're just gonna come through here and snip that off. Maybe we can flatten those back out a little bit. I'm not too worried about marring up the table too bad here okay all right and then we're gonna snip a bunch of these uneven ones on that end and we're just going to kind of do it wherever we feel like and all these variable lengths means that um, once we get this sort of in place we can have it sag and do some different things um, okay so before we get that all the way down in there. We're going to throw a little pool of hot glue in both of them. Try not to make too much of a mess. And then trying not to burn my fingers right off. There we go. Can use those. Okay, come on, get on in there. 
Get in. You know you wanna. Okay. I think some of that might have cooled a little bit fast, so. We're just gonna pump a little more hot glue in. That'll be just fine. Uh, Daria, the VOD I think will be up on Twitch if it goes, if it works, for I think two weeks. Uh, I'm pretty sure this stuff is saved on Facebook as well. I think you can go there to see it. Uh, but I appreciate you tuning in and for all your feedback, and hopefully you'll be able to catch the end. Um, Dari says just seeing the complete process is super helpful. Yeah. Uh, but they have to go. So have a good day, and I know cool. you just started that job doing the truck driving stuff, so I hope it goes well. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a little condescending. <laughs> I mean, I've been following Dari's uh, posts on Facebook. Okay. Get some downs. About time for that uh, that hobby hobby time to relax. Yeah. All right. So this is this is the bottom. So I'm going to sort of pretend like I'm gravity here, and we're going to try to pull some of these cables. All right. We we're, okay. We're stuck at the bottom now. Good. Um. So we're going to pull out a little bit here. Actually, I'm going to use this one. Okay. That one's not really. Hot. try to kind of put some some little kinks and things in this and we'll we'll try to uh, smooth out some of these curves once we get things in place at the end here okay so let's see if we can just sort of bend these that way I know those are looking a little angular in places, but oh, and we've broken that side of the bracket loose again. Okay. All right. You know it might just be easier just to kind of like get the nose of this under here. I'm just trying not to like super duper break these uh, these brackets off um, okay so we're gonna try to curl this back down and around if we really want to keep these uh, separate and and looking really um, uh, varied we can uh, kind of do them one at a time here and as long as we're not dumping a ton of super glue in here, we can we can try to glue it to the inside lip of this MDF. There we go. And we're gonna have to do a considerable amount of sort of like massaging afterwards to get these to relax in a way that makes them look a little a little more natural. We have a comment on Instagram from Chris Bennett. Oh yeah. And he says, and I quote, you need a lab coat. Yeah. And I said, maybe he wears one when he's not on camera. <laughs> you guys can't prove he doesn't. Because you can't prove a negative. That's correct. Okay. If the so. death ray makes terrain in the woods, is it still making terrain? Yes. That made much sense. You, you, you gave it a go, bud. I mean, to be fair, where we're at, nobody would know what we're doing. That's true. That's, you know, partly why we're here. We don't have all the hustle and bustle of uh, city life around us. Little do the cows know. <laughs> my mom says, my IT brain is freaking out over unorganized wire management <laughs> and wants to fire the contractor. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. If I saw this on an actual IT project, I would lose it too. But... Uh, I've seen enough bad wiring jobs, as I am also <laughs> an IT person, uh, to know uh, exactly what I don't want to see. So. And this right here is an example of what he doesn't want to see inside of a computer. That's true. Useless wizard, wizard says eye twitching. Yep.
Okay, so I've sort of just smashed all those through. And we're just gonna bend those up for the time being until we're done kind of fixing them and getting them in place. Um, kind of intentionally tangled some of them up just so they look like they were maybe run at different times. Um, nope, that one's popped out there. So it looks like after the cable guy's done in my house. It's like, I ran the cable. You have satellite now. Thanks, bud. Fun fact, I had, we had a, a guy come to install internet who didn't want to crawl under the house. So he did some hack job on the front of the house. It's terrible. Okay. So now we're going to just try to round some of this out and make it look like gravity is taking effect on it and it's not super angular like some of it is currently. The uh, Bustin Shop says he uses bad cabling jobs as an excuse to get away from his desk to clean things up. Super cathartic. And the mop says, question, mm -hmm. would cables like that be something you traditionally do at this stage in the model, or would you base paint it first, then do the cabling to keep the color? Um, you could easily do it that way, but like, let's say on, on this one, um, where we've done some of that cabling already, um, it's, it really depends on what kind of look you're looking for. In the end, this is all going to be pretty grungy and, um, heavily washed. So I'm not too worried about it because we can do sort of a base color on this after we've airbrushed everything else around it. Um, and then do some heavy weathering and washing on top of it. And it'll kind of hide all the seams and places where we weren't as precise. Um, if I was trying to do this um, where we wanted this to be a uh, super clean or brightly colored kind of uh, kind of thing, then yeah, I would definitely save this part for later. Um, mostly just because uh, it would be a nightmare to try to paint these individually or to keep them a super precise color. But if you want to have it like our, our reference image where, uh, yeah, there's some different colors there, but it's an awful lot of shades of gray it's not going to be as crucial. You know, you got your, your grays and then the actual spots of color um, are are pretty small and, and, and concentrated in a couple of areas. So, um, anyway. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I think that that's generally a pretty reasonable profile there. Uh, I, could, I could fuss around with that for about forever. Um, there's a couple in here that I think I might want to try to bend just a hair more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think we're definitely getting a messy wire look that is somewhat believable there. I think now. this would be really cool to feed into at the top. Whatever's above it, you can, you have a really cool thing like... Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? Like, that, that, that's, that's pretty cool. That is a great question. I think that that would, um, that would definitely be a place where I would try to, um, you know, find some cool... Uh, the teleportation pad! <laughs> it teleports you all the way from the Magic Garage up to the second floor. <laughs> or, or, you know, somewhere else. Maybe, uh, maybe this is uh, something that Captain Kirk had to uh, develop so he could get back up to the Enterprise. From what? Okay. Sure. He crashed on some <laughs> shanty town. You know how he is. He was out there mingling with the, the wildlife or something, and needed that teleporter pad. Got to get back. You know what? I, I'm, I'm still I'm still dedicated to using this somewhere, but I'm thinking maybe we don't worry about it in here. Maybe we do it on some other place. You got a little bit of a lip above the front right where you're at, mm -hmm. above the door. Could yeah. you like run it around under? Like yeah, do like it there and there. around. Like it's like a like it's running underneath. Some yeah. Other yeah. Probably, and in fact, we could probably run it in between that and just have it end right yeah. in the side of that. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, because if that's some type of like exhaust porty thing in the jig or mm -hmm. whatever it is, like it makes sense that maybe if, if there's other uh, tubing running to it. Yeah, um, I think I'm gonna wait on that until we we have these edges figured out and like what's what's actually gonna be there. Um, I don't want to put that there and then it's like okay, that goes to right under a thin walkway or something yeah. like it doesn't make sense so but yeah that is a good point you know we've we've got this this area here now um now you go back oh, to the front sorry, okay 
uh, yeah, we've got this area here. We need to make sure that whatever goes here, uh, it makes sense to have all those extra cables and the ductwork going to it. Um, so we may have to go a little, uh, little um, off script and figure out something to, to stick up there. Or it just is part of the interior of the building. We assume that there's something cool in there. So, yep. All right, um, guys, we are going to take a quick uh, like 10 minute break. We're going to, you know, grab a drink, hit the bathroom and we'll be right back. Play a little bit of hockey. <laughs>
All right, and yeah, welcome back, everybody. Um, so for this next little bit, um, we're gonna plan out where models are gonna go on the top of our building here. So let's let's take a look what we got. All right, so we got our stairs going up the side here, um, and got our 25 mil base model, um, and thinking up here at the top, maybe we've got. Uh, Roughly this area here is going to be walkway. What do you mean those silver sharpies, man? Then maybe we have it come around that way. Um, give us a sec. Justin's going to run and grab a sharpie, silver sharpie, so we can actually see what I'm doing here. But, uh, you know, more or less having a space. Okay, that's a little narrow. Let's. Bring that out just a hair more. And then. Okay. So that's a little easier to see there. I'll reinforce that with the, the silver sharpie in just a minute here. But having that as kind of a little little walkway area and this as more of a, a building extension, um, I think that's going to look pretty good and give us some functional areas that you'd actually want to put a model. Um, so on this area, we're going to need to build up some railings around it. Um, and I think that uh, we've got a couple of different ways to do that. Um, one relatively easy way is to use uh, plastic card and have it just sort of cap off. And then we can put something up on top, well, not necessarily on top, but along the edge, um, which um, will thicken it up and make sure that it doesn't look thin and flimsy. Um, so let's let's start figuring out how long a piece we need. So I'm thinking we need to we need to cap this off here and then we need to leave a gap probably from there to there so that you've got models entryway here and then uh, all the way around the other side. So uh, and the, the other nice thing about this is that if we wanted to have this be a rounded corner, uh, you could actually flex this around that edge and get something cool that way. All right. So, um, let's see here. Where do we want to start? Uh, I'm thinking, let's just start here. I guess, realistically, we need to figure out, you know, how tall do we want these railings? Because that that is absurd. That's a wall and not a railing. So I'm thinking maybe like half of that. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? What do we have? I'm thinking like about uh, 0.75 inches, three quarters of an inch should give us enough room on that rail um, so it looks like it would actually keep you from flying right the heck over the edge. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. Here we go. 0.75. We got 0.75. Quick little zip there. Snap that guy off. And now that we've got this ready, uh, we can use this as our ruler for the next piece. So, just lightly scoring. Nothing quite got up to the edge there. There we go. And then, whew, that got a little, little funky towards this back edge here. So, got a little little torn up, but that's okay. We just won't use that piece. Or we'll trim it or do something else. Okay. So, let's just start blocking this in here. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've made a mistake already. Hilarious. Um, this should be up here, but if we're gonna have it capped on the edge, probably should have gone for the straight one inch strip. Uh, so we're gonna save those for a little bit later. Um, those will still be handy for other stuff. Um, but we'll grab the rest of our sheet here and we'll do a one inch strip this time. Sorry for all you guys who are talking in chat right now, maybe asking questions. Uh, Justin is still fetching the... Nope, not so much. This might be okay for some Oh my reason. gosh. <laughs> I could not find any of the other ones you had and can't find my silver sharp. Okay, well then. Um, that's okay. We'll be fine. All right. So here we go. We're going with a one inch strip this time. The left says... 
Dang. It's going to even have a balcony. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, buddy. I'm going to do it. You know what you should have done? I'll, I'll help out. Malev, let me... Um, just hold tight, bud. Oh, Justin sneaking in the background here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, just saying, sure would be nice if there was just a little bit of a uh, malev here. Oh, yeah. You know, for scale purposes. <laughs> so these are these are some uh, some Infinity models that Malev painted for us, and our cameras are not doing it justice. You want to switch over to? There you go. This one right here. Oh yeah. Reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking real nice. I got the ones that were the right scale. The uh, was it the Anaconda? Is that the other one? No, the Iguana. It was the yeah. Iguana, right? Mm -hmm. Is 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 super cool. Yeah, for sure. I'm just saying, Malev's Malev's all right. He knows he knows his way around uh, finger painting. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i think uh definitely very cool come upstairs all right yeah man gotta show the love when there's love to share all right so you want me to get those out of the way so i don't get broken please i don't, I don't want to get glue or anything <laughs> i'll just take them on home with me you better not i mean joe won't miss them those are mine. I thought the oh the, the no the hawk is his yeah. yeah. Okay, little hot glue action right here. Okay. Oop. Probably should have done this a little differently, but that's okay. There we go. So for uh, anyone who is watching right now, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, if you have any questions, now is a good time. Uh, we will not be on forever this evening. Uh, I'm not sure how far Austin is going to get. I'm sure as in true Austin fashion, he's going to try and just uh, bust it out here and get as much done as he can. But mm -hmm. if you have questions or want to engage with Austin, I highly encourage you to do so now because uh, there is a finite amount of minutes left for us to be hanging out. So if you would like yeah. to chime in, now is a good time. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get just as much done as we can uh, this evening, but we probably won't be on a whole lot past eight. So we got about another hour worth of work we're gonna do tonight, uh, and then we will uh, come back and uh, work some more on it next time. Um, and Mark says, uh, which I think you might have addressed this before he came in the chat. Okay. Preferences on when to use hot glue versus super glue. Um, more or less, I'm only going to use the hot glue when, um, when I'm gluing something onto the foam board, but like here, I'm going to use some super glue, uh, to join the edges of those, uh, those two, um, two plastic panels. I could use plastic cement here and that would be just fine. Um, but I like super glue and that's what I'm going to use here. Um, and then pretty much any time that I'm not gluing something to foam, like MDF to MDF or plastic to MDF or whatever, I'm probably going to use super glue just because it's it's faster. Um, there's nothing necessarily better about it for that application as much as it is just a, a, a function of speed. Um, so that is that is my preference there. Okay, so we also probably need to put some railing around the top of the stairs here. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about this. This is a world without OSHA, so, you know, uh, we're just not going to worry about that. Um, let's... And Oceania would not be happy with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. They can calm it on down. The Kilted Viking. What's up, man? We, uh, he just followed us. Uh, we sent him a, or gave him a little care package the other day. Hopefully it has nice, nice, nice. with some, uh, some good products for you to try out on the stream. Yay. Okay. So we're gonna see if we can get our little flat cutter in here. <laughs> ah. <laughs> there we go. Good. Great. It works sometimes. <laughs> it's just you know, that's just the way it goes, man. It is the way. Just it is. the way it goes. Useless wizard. Wet wizard. Useless wizard types in F. <laughs> Just the letter F. 
Yeah. Got to get Fs in the chat, man. Yep. Yep, and Maleb puts in an emote. Rip. <laughs> yep. Uh, for anyone who's hanging out as well, uh, friendly request. If you think about it, you're working on some hobby stuff of your own, maybe use some DIY terrain. If you happen to throw anything up on Instagram, feel free to tag us. We would love to see what you're yeah. working on. At Death Ray Design. Yeah. I think uh, it'd be fun to put make, I guess, some, uh, some custom hashtag for scratch building stuff um yeah that'd be that'd be fun uh somewhere to terrain, somewhere to share hashtag terrain take. Yeah. yeah i feel like i feel like this is a, a prime prime territory for me to put my foot in my mouth just in case it's something hideously inappropriate you see uh, but you see Malev goes hashtag train takeout seems like a good one haha -ha, yeah just he was typing it while i was saying it look at that boom it. All right. Here we go. Oh, uh, Malev says he's about to go check that hashtag. Make yeah, sure yeah, yeah. Some inappropriate stuff. Yeah, that would be good. Because, like, part of me was, like, you know, trying to do some, like, scratch building pun kind of thing, like, hashtag scratching post or something. But then I'm like, that's probably something yeah, weird. Yeah, that was probably, that, one, that one's probably That one sketchy. feels sketchy already, like. The words in my mouth, I'm just like, oh no, what is what is that? Somebody in chat right now is like, let me go check a subreddit. <laughs> well, let me tell you, don't use that. Oh look, no one's used it yet. Maleb says. Oh, uh, what terrain takeout? Yep. Well, it sounds like we just cleaned it. Boom. All right. Okay, so we've got basically this this piece done here, and now we just need to reinforce the top of that as um, soon as we. Trim down a little bit of a little bit of this stuff. Let's see if we can even that out. Maybe we can just sand it with the emery board there. There we go. That's nice. What you need them for? Sanding sticks. Oh, <laughs> literally Joe stuff. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so, 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 let's see what we have here. So we've got some, some little strips and things of MDF that we could use to reinforce that. Um, <laughs> do I want to use that there or do I want to? Do something else. Like we could get more texture if we were using these little guys, but I don't know if that's appropriate there. You know what? I think it is. I think if we did it like this, that that would look cool as a, a little railing oh, thing. Man, we're, we're turning this into a noodle shop. I just I think that it's a it's a cool texture. Um, and while you know you might assume that that's only going to be helpful for like industrial sort of looking stuff, you know, just turn it into something that's more of a decorative motif. In fact, we've got the, the wider tooth ones. I think maybe we just go with that. I think that'd be cool. All right, so let's start popping some of these guys out. All right, start with those. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay. So I'm just gonna mark the back side of that. And Super glue, super glue, super glue. Just tack that to the top there. And despite my best efforts, it would seem that we still had some overhang there. says, is this foam board regular stuff for like school projects or specialty craft foam board? Um, I don't know if it's special or anything, but you want to go to the wide angle there. Um, I think I picked this stuff up on Amazon. It's 
Ar Ar Arteza, A R T E Z A. It's I, I thought that the the black matte foam board would be a little easier to see, like contrast wise, on camera. So I just went with that. Um, but the white foam board would be just fine. Every like this one was built with the the uh, the white foam board that you just get at like you know the drugstore in the school supply section. So nothing overly special about it. He says noise. <laughs> All right, let's okay. So we've trimmed that flat now, and we're gonna try. Well, that that'll that'll work pretty well there. So I'm just gonna throw some glue right there at the top. Clobasnik Clo says that miter cutter looks like some sort of later generation Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> it does from the side. Clap clap clap. clap. Whatever its name is, it's just saying it a whole bunch of times. Yep. Clippion! Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alright. So I think we're just gonna trim this. It does that. kind of look like a fish. Yeah, it's like a weird dolphin. Ah, he says, gotta snip them all. <laughs> That's funny. That sounds like an ASPCA message. It does. You know what? That's the, you're, you're right on. <laughs> You're right on. Okay, so I'm just gonna miter this edge a little bit further just to try to. Um, it might actually be easier if I set it down so I've got the table to push against there. Okay. And then I'll just add a little bit of glue to seal that up. Okay, so now we've got that piece ready to go. Um, so let's just continue on around the edge. So um, because this interior side ends on a peak there or valley depending on if you're how you're looking at it there we can do the same um basically get one of the ones that starts with the the wider side and then um i feel like we're getting like a weird kind of angle thing there okay whatever we're just gonna go with that And we're gluing ourselves this stuff again. This is the way. Indeed. Okay. So there's a little bit of something to, to trim up in here just to get it all flush, but um, it's gonna be a little tough to do. Actually, yeah, we just flip it over. There we go. All cleaned up. So I'll just bring this on around this guy again Pretty even okay okay all right yep that'll that'll work actually let's Let's grab a fresh piece, just so it'll be one continuous piece all the way to the end there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Get that all sealed on, and then... Maleb says, what sort of thing would you normally have on a background when crafting leisurely like? Um, Maleb, I'm assuming you're asking like what he'd be listening to other than my dumb face talking, <laughs> which is normally because if he's here 99% of the time, I'm probably here, which means he's listening to me babble about nonsense. About how much, you know, he's mad about some update from GW or... I'm mad all the time. It's, it's just, I'm always mad about something. Uh, or if I walk out of the room and then walk back in, he's like, you singing, bud? And I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> I sing and I boop and I bop. It's like a self-soothing thing, right? Okay. So he says, music or shows, and I would also like to add in, um, I think it would be cool for you to talk about some of the things you listen to on your drives. Because he oh, sure. listens to a lot of podcasts and um, audiobooks um, yeah. in the truck. So there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about there. Yeah. Um, okay. So generally... Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Aliens. I mean, I don't know if 
there have been any hints over the years. I mean, you that, can point to your, your top right that, shoulder there. <laughs> that, that aliens are a thing that I like, and especially like classic, you know, retro alien stories. But also a lot of the, the new um, new types of media that include that kind of he stuff. Says, oh, like saucers and stuff? Yeah, yeah. oh, like that. <laughs> um, I like, um, you know, stories about paranormal things. I like stories about, um, you know, the supernatural. Um, I don't necessarily believe any of them are true, um, but I'm also not going to say that they can't possibly exist. They're, even if they aren't and they don't, then they're still a fascinating storytelling mechanic. Um, it really um, brings a lot of interesting, imaginative things uh, to the story when you're talking about those things. As long as they're, you know, done in a way that isn't just tropey, you know. Um, so specifics, though. Um, I, got a, I got a question yeah. to interject about books. Does the name Brandon Sanderson mean anything to you? Yeah. Why? Mamaf says the new Brandon Sanderson book is out on Audible and should give you a good 58 hours worth of listening. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right for Sanderson. What, yeah. What does he write? Um, well, the, the first one in the series that I think... Uh, he's talking about the one that just came out. The, the first one for that series was uh, Way of Kings, which I think I read a while back, but I cannot be sure. Um, Probably one of my favorite Sanderson books, and one of the ones that I remember most vividly, is um, Elantris. And that was a lot of fun. And I think that I enjoyed it a lot because of the very particular attention that was paid to uh, the structure of the city, and the details of the buildings, and that they were ruined, and that they used to be magical, and all this stuff. Is the one with the lady, like, on one side? I mean, don't spoil it. Hold on. Oh, Sorry. Is it the one where there's like two sides of the gate where something's different on each side? Is this that book? I think so. I think I think okay. we talked about it. Because you, you, I recall like you talking about the, the architecture. Sorry, people. I spoiled a thing. About you you, you a, didn't. Cool. You're fine. I don't know if you, <laughs> you actually remember said, enough. Yes. Because <laughs> like the, the, yeah, there's like a whole like Oedipus not quite the like outcast comes back type thing. Uh, I mean yeah okay that's fair. Not, not Oedipus but more like I don't know. Yeah. No, nobody was nobody was. Uh, doing inappropriate stuff with their parents, but... Mamma says Stormlight Archive Book 4 is the new one called Rhythm of War. He also did okay. the Mistborn series. Okay. Yeah, um... One of the... Let's see here. Some of the long-standing series that I've... I've been a fan of. Uh, Dresden Files. That's one, for sure. Um, always been a fan of... Um, I guess, sort of... Um, What's what's technically the the name of the 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 genre there? It's like urban magic, something. I don't remember. There's a, there's a term for it, but I I've, I've always enjoyed it. And uh, Dresden was one of my sort of entry points for that back in college. And um, <clears throat> then uh, let's see what else, what else, what else. I, some of them that are some series that I've listened to that are already complete are um, the Iron Druid Chronicles and um, there's a bunch of trilogies and things. Um, the God, I'm having trouble thinking of the actual trilogies. The, the Southern Reach trilogy um, was pretty good. That was, what was that? Uh, Annihilation something extinction. Um, and that was, that was a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of like spooky paranormal vibe kind of things, or, or ultra terrestrial, extra dimensional kind of things. Um, and um, I mean, I could just pull my phone out and look at Audible and see <laughs> what all I've what all I've listened to. As far as podcasts go, um, I like a wide variety of stuff. Um, I like SCP. comedy stuff. Uh, yeah, I've listened to some of the SCP. Uh, one of, I guess one of them, whatever the, the main one is, I can't remember the name of it right now, but one of the SCP podcasts. And then, um, let's see. Oh, uh, um, Magnus Archives. Magnus Archives are like SCP, but like somebody actually made a coherent storyline for the whole thing. So, whereas... Um, all of the SCP stuff is very fly by the seat of your pants, uh, crowdsourced storytelling, 
which is very cool. Um, it doesn't necessarily make for uh, great continuous storyline stuff. So, um, Magnus Archives is pretty good, but I will say I'm listening to the last season, which is currently airing, and uh, it's some pretty heavy stuff, considering what's going on in the world today. I'm assuming uh, this is when we were still talking about Brandon Sanderson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Useless Wizard says he finished <clears throat> the Wheel of Time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, um, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Robert Jordan passed away. He stepped in and helped finish that off. Which I heard the his his take on those last couple of books was actually really good. So, good on That's him. Good yeah, I mean... He could have went really south and ruined the, the story. Yeah. Ruined the, like, the fan base. Yeah. So it's nice to see when it goes right. Yeah. It, it, it was obvious that he cared about that series. Um, uh, more than I did at some point. But, um, yeah. Wheel of Time, it, it, was, it, it was a lot. It was just a lot. So, we're talking about <laughs> aliens and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and this is more towards Maled here. He says he likes aliens and, oh, yeah. and extraterrestrial life and all that stuff. The thing that's really interesting for me, especially when we think about like time and, and, and it just could get like heavy for a second. Um, we're talking about like dimensions and stuff like that. So, if there was a, a way for you to just like flip a switch and check a thing, like I don't know, the, the parallel universe drop box. And you can look at <laughs> how this guy's take on the um, conclusion of the Wheel of Time compares to how the original author would have done it had he survived long enough to finish it in another uh, universe, another dimension. How those would have compared? Like in my brain, I immediately see like that branch, and I wonder what would it have been? How close did he get? Would they both have equally been super cool, or did someone like actually do better? Like I'm interested. Like that's time and, and, and dimensions. Like that stuff super interesting. Like I, I don't know about you guys, but I find it super cool. Deep thoughts, Justin Hall. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the way it is. That is the way? It is. Okay. Oh, so Eustace Wizard says um, Robert Jordan's wife made a good choice, assuming she had uh, picked the, the guy to, to finish mm -hmm. the series. And then he said that Robert Jordan had uh, also um, had the very last chapter written out already. So the, the final conclusion he'd already written. Okay. Interesting. So we do have to just kind of fit everything that went in between. Well, that's that, still pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Okay. All right, so we've got this roughed in here. I'm going to put a little super glue here in the corner. All right. So now I need to... Let's just cut this a little long. Nope, oh, don't break it. Stop breaking it. There we go. Ta da! Now we just gotta trim that down a little bit more right after I fill up that corner with super glue. Okay, so we've got a couple of edges to trim. Oh, let's flip that over. That way we can. Sort of reinforce what we're doing here. What's up? So, Wizard says Brandon knew how things ended up. Robert Jordan had copious notes on the timeline and plot. He spent the last months on his deathbed dictating notes. So, it wasn't just like it was an abrupt end. Like, he, he knew it was on the way he, out. Yeah, so he, he put out what he needed to to try and make sure. That was really cool. Also, you know. Good on somebody who knows that, like, long after they're gone, their legacy is gonna, gonna carry forward, and you want to see that, uh, you know, those ties, you know, those ropes tied, those loose ends tied. Very cool. Okay. Mm, I'm sure, that's a fun noise for everybody. I mean, it was nice. More trimming, more trimming. Okay. 
gummy from the uh, accelerator. There we go. Much better. All right. Mm, it looks like we've got it more times than not starting on the... Oh. Well, let's do it this way. Let's just... Pop a little edge piece off there. And by that, I mean, uh, we're going to start over here. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Got that piece. And now, okay, we're going to, we, I keep flipping this back over so that I've got the, the table to push against. Um, Otherwise, it would be very difficult to get uh, the amount of force I need to actually make this work okay. without actually just ripping everything to shreds. All right. So then let's have that piece come over here. And we just need to miter this. Go that way. Good. All right. Straight over to the edge now. Interesting stuff going on in the chat there, bud. I was seeing a post from Badger. No. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, as a follow up to a previous conversation, um, Malev, if you are still there, when you are hobbying it up and not on stream and not, you know, jamming out to your own music, which. I'm sure you spend more time making it than just sitting there enjoying it. At least that makes sense to me. Uh, what do you like to listen to in the background and get your hobby on? I listen to a lot of, um, recently, a lot of lo-fi music stuff. I think Austin and Joe are both kind of turned me on to that and some synthwave stuff. And I listen to a lot of... Um, um, Podcast recently, I've really enjoyed Joe Rogan, and um, I love Star Talk with Neil deGrasse Tyson. It is the guy makes me feel like an idiot, but I love <laughs> to him. He's so smart, and I don't get it. But like, I like listening to smart stuff that I don't get. I want to get it, but I feel like my brain only has so much RAM and not a lot of extra room for expansion. I I was born in a time when solid state drives weren't a thing, and uh, my little disk drives are just. They're slowing down in my old age. Yeah, you're so old, Justin. I mean, I feel old. I've drank enough caffeine. I've probably fried those hard drugs. Yeah, it would seem we've got some schmutz on the wall here. Okay. All right. Railing! So here we go. we got some railing done. And let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> Malev says, correction, cyber schmutz. Cyber what? Schmutz, the oh. stuff on the radar. Yes, cyber schmutz. Gotta watch out for that. For some reason, I'm feeling like this top floor, there's nowhere really to put it now. I feel like it needed a fireman's pole. <laughs> like, I feel like that would have been super dope. Yeah. Like, this is cyber whatever mini Ghostbusters area. Instead of having, like, an old hearse, they have, like, a motorcycle that screws out on. Yeah. Yeah. 
Got your got your ghost cycle. Yeah. I mean, you've got the grooblies for the backpacks. Okay, so we've got... Yeah, okay, so Justin's <laughs> talking about... Oh, here they are. This little guy. Here. Oh. The one on the end here. Yep. Little looks looks a little looks a little bit like a proton pack. Yeah, so you could have like a little thing you put on the wall, and you know they grab them as they get on their little ghost bikes and cruise on out. Oh, is that gonna focus on? Oh, that? oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. I thought you were done. Um, I mean, eh? Hey? There's hey? It, it looks like there's a ghost on the screen. Right okay, here. whatever. <laughs> All right. So I'm just taking measurements for this area on top here. So we got. Uh, oh, Malev says, ah, that's the ghost deposit stations. Ah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. So basically, uh, you just said that your train's a ghost dumpster. <laughs> 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 All right, so six and three quarters by like five and a quarter. Nine and three quarters. Black. Okay, so six and three quarters and. Five and a quarter. Just give ourselves a little bit of a little bit of flub room there. Um, <clears throat> so I think uh, I tell you what I tell you what. Um, let's let's finish what we're gonna do for the, the the bottom floor here. There's a couple of places that I wanted to put something that we talked about earlier on in the stream. Uh, namely, we got a little a little number pad here next to the door, um, and then let's do the the hose. Um, and uh, that may be about all we've got time for today. And we can start with the second floor. Where did I put the snippers? There they are. Okay, cool. How am I losing these things all the time? It's funny because I do that all the time. And the chronic toast says, hey, and looking awesome. Thank you, thank you. Also, thank you for that follow. Uh, Austin here, the, uh, the owner, Dr. Death Ray himself of Death Ray Designs, is working on a DIY scratch built set of terrain, or, or building rather. That is uh, using uh, our new terrain takeout kit that's going to be coming out soon. So you can use it in conjunction with bits you have at home, foam board, cardboard boxes, things of that nature to make your own terrain. <laughs> Thank you for the host as well. Okay. So here we go. We're going to put that guy right there. Cool. Very uh, cool. Got a nifty little thing. And you know what? Let's just have like a little strip of something coming out the the bottom of that. So get out of my way. Get out of my way, little bits. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. So we're just gonna put a little. A little strip of glue right under here. Yep, there we go. Just got like a little conduit thing where maybe some wires are running up to it. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've still got this area over here that's a little bit on the blank side. Um, Let's let's finish that up with something something fun and interesting. Let's see what else we have in our uh, our little pack o card bits. Okay, we don't need another door. I think I think I know what we need here. I think we need one of these little guys. I think those are cool. Let's roll with that. Just slice that out real fast. All right, so that's one piece for us. And then we got some more spots over here. Maybe we just grab a couple of the like little random pop out pieces of MDF. Maybe we got like circle and maybe another one of the little pieces from these guys. Let's grab one of these. And get those arranged and maybe a little bit more of the plastic card stripping. So let's just kind of sketch out what it is that we're going to do here. Thinking we can put our little, little piece off to the side here. 
And then maybe we have a strip that comes across there and then down. And then we put our oval over here in a circle. And then, actually, you know what? You know what, this is a perfect place for us to use some of the, the like, the little uh, rivet pieces, I think. I think this is. Yeah, why not? Um, okay, so. That's a thing that we haven't used at all. Um, I'm, I'm actually not gonna use the, the rivets so much as I am gonna use the, um, the hex bolts. Just like, it's a panel that's bolted on. Um, you want to give me the close-up from the far side? So, we've got these, these little hex bolts here. And the, uh, the shaft on them uh, will slip into a 1 8 inch hole. So, we're just going to pop a little hole in the plastic card, and then we can just drop them straight in. If you don't want to do that, you could always just snip them right off of the, the, uh, the little column, and then you can glue them down wherever you want. But, um, just to show you um, how this would work, um, and granted, we've got some foam behind here that I, I think we need to be careful about. So, let's see. Let's, let's put one kind of blocking in the four corners of this area here. Okay. So, I'm going to prop this up a little bit. So I've just got, if I were a sane person, I'd be doing this with a pen vise, but an eighth of an inch is a little bit big for this, so we're just gonna come in with a drill. Okay, there we go, we got one hole. All right, now that we actually have a hole established, I'm going to uh, just uh, make sure that I've got things pretty well blocked out exactly where I want them. Give myself some little crosshairs here. Okay. And we're gonna go nice and slow. And we're gonna tear the side of the building off. Now we're okay. GG. Yeah, we pulled away just a little bit. That's okay. Uh, let's go wide for a second. Um, just gonna... Put a little extra reinforcing hot glue in here behind this. That is one of the things that sometimes happens if you're applying a lot of, a lot of pressure to it afterwards. Um, this is, I mean, you could probably do this without the drill and just holding the drill bit and you'd be okay, but I wanna try. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so we got that cleared out. So let's get our other two real quick. Okay, and then last one down here. Clear off the rest of that debris, and then I'm gonna scuff up the surface a little bit to make sure that we don't have any um, any pieces still torn out from there. Okay. So just Matt, I don't know if you missed it. He was drilling holes. That's why you heard a power tool. <laughs> Sorry to have startled you. Okay. You must have been sleeping on the job, Mr. Mod. <laughs> You've been doing a fine job. Oh, well, I mean, it's not easy for me to delete messages if you're spam. Fortunately, we, uh, we haven't had any since the beginning. Fair enough. You got the first one. Well, there you go. Okay, so... Got our holes. Uh, Clan Wolf lost in Battletech. Sleeping on the job. All right, so we're going to zoom in just a bit here. All right, so... We're going to put just a little bit of super glue around the edges of these. That first one got a little out of control. I'm gonna wipe some of that away. Okay. All right, and now, 
actually, I feel like a lot of these were. You know what? We're just gonna wipe it all off. We're good. All right, so we're gonna put these in and then we'll add some super glue, the, the thin super glue stuff. So we got a couple of little hex bolts there. One more. Where'd the other one is? Oh, there it is. And we're back. All right. There we go. So doing it this way also allows us to rotate them a little bit if we wanna get them to a particular orientation before we set them. And then once we're ready, we're gonna use some of this like super ultra thin super glue right after I trim the end though, because that end is getting to be a little bit of a dough ball. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna come in here and just barely gonna put a little tiny touch right there at the seam. You gonna go? It's like barely anything happens there, but you get enough super glue in behind it because it sort of sucks in behind. There we go. So now we've got these lovely little hex heads and um, got this piece that I'm gonna stick right there in the middle. And I guess let's uh, sort of separate that off as its own panel that's bolted down with a piece of plastic card strip. And Now it actually feels like this is a completely separate sort of area from this. I didn't quite get it all the way to the top there, but that's okay. We'll be all right. Actually, if we were really concerned about it, we would zoom out first. And then let's, uh, let's just find where, okay. There we go. So essentially I'm just gonna mark the, the width of the strip there. And I'll come in here and score that. And I can basically just pop that top piece off. And then we will put just a little bit of glue there. And be careful to line that up. And take it all the way to the edge. There we go. So now it goes all the way to the top, and all we gotta do is trim off that side. Okay, and then got our two last little little pieces over here that we're gonna use. We're gonna put that in there, put our little pill shape. Okay, that got that got on there a little crooked. I'm gonna take it back. Just gonna get the knife under there. Scrape that back down. One more again. Okay, better. Okay. 
right, I think it looks pretty reasonable. We got two kind of different things going on there. And got all kinds of strings and things. Um, so we were talking before about having the that big hose come out from under here and come around over here. So we know we've, we're gonna have a big piece of a building here. So both this area and this area will be underneath something that it would make sense for this to actually go to, or at least we can imagine it would. So uh, let's grab our little pieces that we pulled out previously. Um, there we are. So we've essentially got a handful of little brackets here that we're gonna use to mount this piece of flexible um, plastic hose. Um, and that's gonna look like yet another piece of cool conduit stuff. So let's figure out kind of our spacing here. Um, so we could have that come in from there. We could go through a bracket right about there and then it can loop through the hole and into the side of this ductwork. So I'm thinking that's probably enough material there. We'll give ourselves just a hair more. So yeah, so now we can, yeah, that should be plenty. Okay, cool, so that can yeah. go. Which is it puts the EDF on and it gets the hose. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna sort of twist this a little bit and work it through this bracket. And then once I've got enough on one side, I can work it through the other way. Okay. All right. So I'm thinking let's get the top bracket here applied down with some hot glue before we try to super glue the other piece on there. Actually, no. So we don't want to necessarily get a whole bunch of super glue onto the foam because that would be bad. So let's do this this way. Okay. All right. Malev is really excited to see all that cabling. Yeah. Austin handmade all of those. It's not actual metal. He was in here pulling plastic. <laughs> Hot plastic strings. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I mean, I saw. Don't tell me what I saw. All right. Clan Wolf says, I think Austin is having more fun than he wants to admit. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm having a blast. I'll admit it. <laughs> Boom. Clan Wolf says, like a kid in a candy store. Yep. Okay, so now, now we've got our two hose ends and a piece there that we can use as a mounting bracket. All right, so let's get okay. We've got our little dollop of glue there, and we're gonna tap that around until we get a good bit of purchase. Okay. Now, oh, 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 we weren't set yet. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> well, all right. We still got some movement there. It's going to take a second. We got any questions while we wait? Uh, if no, that's okay. Malev says, ha ha. I was going to say I'm having fun, so he ought to be. Boying, boyong, or that noise, he typed it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Let's get some more hot glue I'm going on right there. Okay. So. Let me see if I can get my hand out of the way so you can see what I did. All right. It's really dark in there. Okay. Got our bracket all glued down right there. We got the other end tacked down there. Okay, yeah, that's still very soft. So we're just going to hold this and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and one you can cut back to the front camera. Oh, right. 
Do you, do you didn't tell them about an accelerator for hot glue. Oh yeah, an upside down uh, can of compressed air. There you go. Oh, no, that's not compressed air. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that's the rimming the oil. Woman. Yeah, do not put oil on the foam board. That is not gonna help. We wanted to look like a shanty town, so just make this building derelict. Just make it so oily. Now you're just giving him lead lyrics. He was singing in there earlier. I just did not recite his lyrics. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh oh. Uh oh. We got part of our our little uh, thing. Oh, what? what happened? Here? This, this sort of broke away just a little bit. That was my favorite part. Yeah, heaven for friend. Okay. I'm just covered in little hot glue spider webs now. Okay. Okay. Oh, starting to bend that a little bit. Okay. So now let's try to do this again. We're gonna get that through over here. And now because we aren't having to glue it to foam, I can just super glue it on there. Um, let's see, yeah, I think that's probably gonna be our, our best spot for that. Yeah, okay. Totally, and that actually holds that in place really well, uh, so that it's not just sitting flush against the the roof. It actually makes it look like it's moving around a little bit. Maybe I can actually tack that to the underside of that just a touch. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Cool. All right. Is this going to explode when I let go? No? Okay. Yeah, so check that out. That looks real cool. I like that. And it doesn't even block the door, and it kind of goes around the parts that we did. That's neat. <laughs> it's almost like he knew what he was doing. <laughs> nah, I just pretend real good. <laughs> All right. I'm not absolutely in love with this side, but most of the time, that's what you're going to see of it, so... That's, uh, all right. Well, Justin, is there anything else that we need to tackle on the bottom floor of this thing? Uh, when are you going to paint it? After it's done being built. Oh, all right. Well, that's what <laughs> I think of that. Okay, fair enough. Um, I think if we do any more, it's just going to get, it's going to be too much. I feel like the paint job is going to make or fill in any areas. Yeah, uh, I think so too. Yep, I do think the only only material. No, we did use it. Never mind. I was, it was really small piece. I was thinking the thin acrylic. You did use that. Thin acrylic. We did. Oh, we didn't use any rods. That's true. Maybe on the top of it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I think I think that's yeah. that's where this is gonna have to go. Plant Wolf says, "How many streams is it gonna take for you to finish this building?" And uh, he might also want to know if you're gonna paint it on stream. Um, that's a good question. I think that um, depending on how absolutely crazy things get the the week after Thanksgiving, um, I'm going to be spending a lot more time in the shop for that week and uh, might have to dedicate some time to streaming as long as we aren't um, just completely overrun with Black Friday stuff, which could happen. Uh, I would love it to happen, but um, if that I have some... <laughs> if I... Uh, um, end up with some extra time on my hands especially in the evening we'll we'll try to we'll try to get another floor of this done in a session and then um uh maybe maybe depending on the paint scheme that we decide we want to do um we might be able to just tackle all the painting in one session the the big part is that i don't think that we necessarily want to do a lot of airbrushing in the office studio space um that'd probably be better for out on the shop floor especially because then we can use rattle cans um, which are a huge benefit for speed of painting. So, um, so also, um, in addition to doing the additional floors, mm -hmm. painting, or the streams, for you guys in the stream, if you are interested in seeing Austin tackle other DIY types of buildings and stuff, let us know what you think you'd like to see. Send us yeah. messages, uh, tag us on Instagram, which is uh, a PM, whatever it is. Let us know, like, hey, this style of building from this type of universe or game, 
we'd like to see Austin tackle it yeah. and give him some ideas. Yeah, this for sure. This is a project he picked out and he wanted to do, but he'd love to know what you guys had in mind. And it's also a challenge for him to try something different that he might not have thought to do. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. I hope you guys uh, take the time to drop us a message and uh, I'd love to see if we can basically do a, a collaborative thing. Sweet. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you so much for, for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, I hope you had fun, uh, got some entertainment out of it, or you know, maybe even learned some new techniques. Um, we hope that you'll uh, come over to the website uh, during our Black Friday sale and check out uh, some great deals as well as some uh, new products. We've got a ton of new stuff coming out. Uh, we've got several several new sets of terrain uh, for um, themed appropriately for Kill Team, 40K, Infinity, um, Battletech, uh, as well as all the scratch build stuff. And uh, yeah, and uh, we're finally releasing um, a hobby version of Himmelheim. We did a an, a pre-colored version which was our first and only foray into pre-colored stuff. And uh, we decided that was uh, a whole, whole lot of work that um, we weren't ready for and didn't have the space for. So um, we're going to be releasing the the unpainted hobby version of it, um, which will be another nice and much needed addition to our fantasy offering. Um, so like I said, I hope, hope you'll come by and uh, check it out, see if there's something that... Um, would make your table more beautiful and fun and playable or just a fun hobby project because we're all going to have a lot of inside time i uh get the distinct feeling uh through the uh the holidays and winter so not to end on a bummer like that oh boy all right <laughs> thanks guys and uh we'll uh, we'll put up some notifications next time we're going to be streaming i know it's a little bit uh, hazy right now as far as what our schedule is going to look like but we're just trying to get our sea legs under us so uh thanks for sticking with us and uh we hope to see you next time until then Happy Wargaming, guys. Hit the like and follow button. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're streaming on Facebook, <laughs> YouTube, and Twitch. So hit the follow, like, and subscribe buttons so that you guys can see us when we go live. And uh, again, let us know what you thought, if we can improve what you'd like to see. And keep an eye out, because in addition to doing hobby stuff, we're going to try and do some games and stuff out here, too. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, if I have it my way, I will at least attempt to push some streaming, whether it's Austin doing it or me. We're going to try and do some more. So make sure you stay tuned. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Will says subscribe today or get the death ready. <laughs> there you are.